track too. Yeah. So uh, some of these cars that has maybe lower lower power might have uh, might struggle a little. And for y'all, y'all we're looking straight down the pipe for the outer zone one and two. So it's perfect line so you can see where they're at in those zones. But here we go, right coming up is Hidehiko coming up in his uh, Sugita in his C33 Laurel in the worker with 5x here he is coming up to the 321 already initiating coming around to corner into outer zone one right here not quite into outer zone one and real early into outer zone two right there but hitting that inside clip see if he could carry it all the way through this outer zone three was a really safe and subtle run um it's going to be points in the books but i'm not sure if that's going to be enough because those zones were definitely not hit where he needed to be Here he is coming around to outer zone one and like right like you can see right there not quite in the zone at all real early wasn't it could fill the zone in outer zone two and like i said before it all stems to that first initiation coming into the outer zone one allowing them to get the nice the right line to hit all these zones sorry the wind and the everything is just uh making it harder for us to do all this right now but um um, yeah, like right now we saw, like you said, you know, uh, looks like Sugita didn't make it all the way out to the outside zones where he's supposed to be. And also when he was uh, approaching outside zone one, it looks like there was a lot of wavering and um, not as smooth as he should be. So uh, this may not be one of the higher scores, but he does have a score on there. Uh, but like you said, there's 40 somewhat cars. 45 now, yeah, I believe. there's 45 cars, so... I believe that maybe 13 cars or something will not be making it Give into the game. Yeah, yeah so um, every little point they get on track is very, very um, important. Exactly, to especially the, the first run, you don't want it incomplete. You just want to roll it, get a, get a score in the books, and then come out with some flair. But hey, thank you for you fans out there on the live stream. Appreciate you hanging around. I know we had some technical difficulties, but hey, you're here with us now. I mean, Yes, welcome. So welcome. So this is your welcome for that. Yeah, hi. But yeah, right now you're looking at the restaurant that they have that overlooks outer zone two. But here you are, 75 for Sugita in his C33 Laurel. There you go, 75 points. Um, so he has a score on the board for him. Um, I guess it's, I, I haven't seen that many cars make a huge, huge error at practice. Yeah. So I'm not even looking forward to seeing any kind of incompletes exactly. happening on here, you know. So here we are, number 55. Toshiaro Kazuma is going to be up for at the line, ready to go in his JZX100 Chaser with the Team Kazuma with power vehicles. Yeah, he was, uh, I think he skipped the last round, was it? Yeah, yeah, he showed up, he was here watching, supporting his team. But yes, he skipped last round, but here he is ready to go, coming up to the 3-2-1 around the corner. Coming into this outer zone one right there. Beautiful job, flicking it back. Not too bad into outer zone two, into this inside clip and trying to finish off strong here in the outer zone three. Not a bad job by him. I mean, definitely way better than the practice runs he had. So beautiful job by Kazama. And most of you guys probably are familiar with the name Kazama because due to Kazama Auto, he owns Kazama Auto and uh, definitely does a lot of JZX related uh, aftermarket parts. Here's another replay coming around the bend into yeah. the three, two, one. Yeah, so right there, um, he did initiate at the last cone uh, for the three, two, one, so that's okay. But not so much of a hard flick and a little bit of a step um, gaining uh, angle by outside zone two. But I would have to say not a bad run. Very subtle and average, I believe. So yeah. that, that's definitely a score on the board for him, so. Yeah, definitely was, was able to tackle that inside clip to that outer zone three because that stretch is a pretty long stretch for them to carry out and to carry it all the way out to that outer zone three and uh, fulfill it is is pretty amazing. So hopefully we see a lot more of that out of all the drivers, but I definitely seen a lot of struggling through that inside clip. Yeah, so it's weird. Some of these scores, um, since we're divided, but some of... Um, our scores actually tie in together. It kind of goes hand, hand on hand because 
you want a lot of angle through the outside zones and to have a lot of angle you have to have a lot of commitment then half having to flick the car really hard from angle to an angle that takes commitment there you go. as well there 84 you go. look Not at that bad. line judge he has a 28 on the line so he didn't run so much angle and he didn't make it look too flary but at the same time he did not uh miss the line which is a which is a very good job by kazama uh, 84 points for his first run that's not bad at all not bad at all that's but our lead. i'm just speaking and maybe i might be speaking early because we have 40 more cars or so exactly um, and if everybody gets a 100 point run then you know this might be hard <laughs> And here we are coming up as number 328, Shinichiro Saito and his car guy racing A90 Supra. Featured this Supra, I want to say three, it was three rounds ago. At Bisu round is whenever he featured this car. Here he is coming into this outer zone one. Not too bad in the outer zone one. Could be a little bit deeper, real early into that outer zone two and trying to make it up right here, getting into outer zone three. Putting a run in the board. I know he struggled last round at Okayama getting a solid run in, so definitely good to see him get a run in. Definitely has area to improve, especially in those zones that he missed. Yeah, so the same, um, I would have to say as a style judge, the past four cars that we just saw, the first four cars, um, very, very similar. He does have a flick right here, but at the same time, he has to, how can I say it, readjust himself at the inside clip one. Um, and going approaching outside zone three as well doesn't look as smooth as he's supposed to be but um, a fairly well run for the way he's been the past uh, few rounds because it looks like he's been trying to figure out the car and it looks like he's uh, getting used to it l little by little slowly by or step by step here and I know it's a harder track to tackle especially with a brand new car and having to go this fast uh, through the track so he has a score, uh, which is a good good thing. We'll see what he's got. A few of the fans out there are saying between 75 and 80. See how he uh, stacks up to that. But yeah, you can see that incline right there coming up to that outer zone one. There you go, 76. 76 for Saito. Yeah, beautiful weather out. Mid 60s today, but the wind is kind of rough. Hopefully, we'll get a few shots of Fuji. Fuji's actually sitting behind us. But here we are. Next coming up is going to be number 37, Katsuhiro Meguro, in his Good Ride Kyushu JZX 100 Mark II. Here he is coming up to around the bend, up to the 3 2 1. Already initiation coming into that three cone, coming around to outer zone one, and ooh, dipped a few tires right there in outer zone one. Coming around, definitely kind of messed his lineup coming from outer zone one to outer zone two, but there he is finishing strong into outer zone three and being and able to fill out that zone. All right, so not where we want him to be at on the outside zone one um, but since I am not the I'm not the line or the angle judge right here I'm just uh, strictly going off of what I see as a style judge and how you know fluid and um, committed he is I, I guess there was some commit commitment there but it looks like he went a little bit too much too overboard so um, yeah um, he does have a score but at the same time very low pace um, it's not going to be something super high, I believe. Yeah, so we'll see. Definitely took it a little strong there in that outer zone one. A few of the spectators we have out here for the qualifying run. So, yeah, we'll be doing qualifying all day today, get through all these cars, two runs each. And then after that, tomorrow we'll be doing top 32 and top 16. And like Robbie was saying earlier, it's Friday here, so... You know, a lot of people are still at work, but for those of you that came out here, we do appreciate it, and we are glad you're out here. We, are, we have our vendors booth set up. We got all sorts of stuff going on, and definitely these drivers are glad to see y'all out here. There you go, 70. Yeah, because that was like two tires off, almost three, but two tires off at the outside zone one, and he totally missed outside zone two. Yeah. So... 
Yeah, uh, like we were talking about earlier, you know, the style and the angle part is probably something, one part of this track, but, you know, running a tight line on the outside, outside zone one and two is very, very important. So next at the line is going to be number 58, Kazuhiro Kubo in his vacancy with Weld S, uh, 180SX. So we talked to him last round, and his the vacancy part is actually a, a shop he owns, and they do like more VIP related big body cars. Yeah, so it's not like he specializes in 180s or anything, but he drives a 180. Yeah, maybe he should come out with like some super VIP car next time. That would be pretty cool. Here he is, right here, initiating in that three, two, one. Looks like the middle portion coming into this outer zone one, flicking it back around to outer zone two. Could be a little deeper in outer zone two, and then trying to carry it all the way through to that outer zone three. I know he struggled through practice trying to get through those that tight zone right there. So not bad run in the books. Man, I... And this wind is unreal. Here yeah. it is right here. Here's the replay coming around that bend. So after here, well, line-wise, he doesn't make it all the way out to outside zone one. Then over here, um, right there, big bobble. Has to readjust himself to go to outside zone three. So his uh, car not being super stable from outside zone two through inside clip one to outside zone three. That's going to hurt his score on the style side of it. And also looking at the way the line was, it's not like he was carrying himself all the way out to the zones. Um, so definitely not going to be one of the higher scores, uh, but he does have a score on the board, uh, just like everybody else. So that's a big thing. I mean, uh, the pa I think one, two, three, four, five, six. So out of six cars, I, I think I've scored 30 points for four of them. And, and like you said, that's you, 30 out of 40. So exactly. that's like a C average. And you said it's going to be kind of in that, there you go, 72. It's going to be in that average just because of the dynamic and the build of this track. It's naturally going to have flair and style. Yeah, so I think if you see an amazing run, the score is just going to boom, like jump up like crazy. Oh, um, it looks like we have a cone that got knocked over because of the wind. They're going to fix that real quick. Sorry for car number 31, Cold Dai Sobagiri in the R31 Skyline. He is with Team Shibata Silent Tire. They are representing the R31 house, which is in IT Prefecture. I visited that facility before, but man, that's crazy because I've never seen that many cars, same cars, same model cars in one area he, anywhere else in the world. The dedication he has to collect them. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if they're, I think they have a Guinness World Record of oh, having the same car. Oh, in multiple, the same place oh. or something. I, I think we were yeah, talking about that He was saying something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. So um, definitely one. I think they're in between close to Aichi and Gifu area. I think they're in Gifu, I think, um, the edge of Gifu. But um, if you're in the area, you might want to go and check it out because they have a cool display uh, there. And if you're a R31 Skyline fan, um, you might want to go and check it out as well because uh, these boxy shoebox looking cars are super cool. I know you have a soft heart for them. I went and got my driver's license in one of these oh, when man. I was uh, 16 years old. That just shows you how old the car is. But hey, look no, at the it, car still is like, kicking. The car is young. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't beat down the old guys, right? You can't. We're still there. They're not. It's They're a lot easier to work on, I guess. Here he is, coming through this cane, coming around this bend right here. And it's saying, look at that. These cars kicking it already in drift before the 3 2 1 because of that bend. But here he is, coming into outer zone one. Could have be been a little bit deeper in outer zone one. Nice little Ooh. flick right there in the outer zone two. Ooh, but correcting a little bit, coming into that inside clip. Dragging it out to outer zone three. Yeah, there was some correction going on after the flick, and it looked like he flicked it a little too hard, and the front washed out a little bit afterwards after the car tried to find grip. But uh, definitely impressive run. Um, looks more exciting than the runs that we saw previously. Just the style side of it, but at the same time did make uh, a mistake right over there the yeah. front started to or uh, the rear started to grip up more and he had to kind of reinitiate to keep the rear end going um, and like you said the outside zone I think he has good enough angle throughout most of the track but at the same time the line wasn't super impressive he wasn't all the way on the outside zone uh, at outside zone one hopefully he'll be because, yeah because of the rear end doing that I don't even know um, I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention to the line but then I don't even know if he was able to hit inside clip one 
as close as he was supposed to either. So uh, let's see what the score is going to be. Yeah, hopefully he'll be able to finish strong. I know he had str he came late in the season and then at, what is it, I think at BCU or one of the other rounds, he actually struggled. There you go, 80. He struggled with mechanical issues and had to go ahead and tap out. So that was very rough to see, but we'll see if he could carry all the way through and get to the top 32, maybe podium. Yeah, so the key right here is that flick, um, just like what uh, Sobagidi just did from outside zone one to two. If you can keep that angle and steady, um, just imagine how much the score would get higher uh, by keeping it stable and running that you know deep angle um, throughout inside clip one and going outside zone three. Um, you know, that's a lot of stuff we're asking for. You know, exactly. You're like, keep the line tight. Throw a lot of angles. <laughs> This, indi this individual right here is coming up at number 41, Shinichi Uemura has been killing it during practice. Let's see how he is. Look at that, carrying it through that 3 2 one with Team Hirano Tyra with Uemura Sangyo IAS and his JZX100 Ooh. chaser. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that angle coming around. Inside clip, carrying it all the way through to outer zone three right there. A little shallow in outer zone three, but man, real aggressive through that front uh, first part of the track. Yeah, I'm not going to say that was a smooth um angle but definitely impressive because he did throw the car um and that's a lot of risk that's called commitment right there so i would have to definitely give him um, some score for the commitment part of it let me go ahead and check out the replay one more time but he does a fairly okay job on the zones i believe i guess he can go a little bit deeper on the outside zones but right here after the outside zone two he throws it um, you can tell by the front tire there's a little bit of a correction that he had to make because of the angle and it looked like he got a little bit too deep, but I would have to say that that was a pretty impressive. And it, it all comes down to what kind of driver you are too. Some of these drivers, you know, they have to mathematically break down the zones on what they can get in points. And if they have to sacrifice something to get something else out of it, there's a lot more more to give. Like you said, Styles got a lot more points than you do with, let's say, uh, angle or line. So if you have to sacrifice like that inside zone right there, that inside clip, I mean, that he kind of missed, if he had to sacrifice it, there he is, 84. So if he was tighter on the line, that's he has six points right there. And if he didn't make that um, smaller cor correction coming from the outside zone two after he flicked the car, um, that's probably another two, three more points. And he would be easy in the 90s already. So he's very close. Or out of all the drivers that we've seen right now, the way they drove the first run, he might be the closest to making it a 90 into the 90s club um, right. for the second run. Next up is going to be number 408, Shoya Saito. So you saw his dad go earlier in his A90 Supra. Here he is with a car guy racing 180SX. So this was actually his father's, previously his father's car. Now he's driving it, and his father's in that brand new A90 Supra. Yeah, just a reminder for all the drivers and the viewers, there's 40 points total, 20 points uh, for commitment, 20 points for fluidity for style, 30 points and uh, 30, 30 points total for angle and line. So it depends on what you're good at and what you're not good at. What's capable of doing and not capable of doing. And you know, finding the best way to get the highest score out of everybody. Not going for 100, just the highest out of everybody. And here's Saito right here, filling that zone right there beautifully. Oh, but real early, oh, but able to carry it all the way back out. Not sure how he did that right there. Coming around to outer zone three, a little shallow in outer zone three, but yeah, that transition from outer zone one to two, I definitely thought he was bailing on outer zone two. <laughs> yeah, it didn't look like he was gonna make it all the way out to outside zone two, but um, the way the car moved, that was a little weird. Yeah. I mean, um, it's some kind Not of Not normal for sure. Yeah. But then it was, um, he made it out to where he was supposed to. Um, let's go ahead and check this one more time then, All right. Yeah, so a little bit wobbly, so I'm not going to say that's the most fluid run by him, but definitely um, a lot of uh, commitment uh, made by uh, this young driver, driver, Saito. So Huge improvement, though. I mean, over the last few rounds, he's definitely uh, picked up the pace in that car because I know he probably struggled a little because he was in an SR, S15 yeah, last yeah. year. Now he's coming into this 2J power build. There you go, 84 power built 180 SX that he's driving. So it's definitely different power plant, different power that he's playing with. And then the chassis is a little different too. Yeah, so right now too, how can I say it? The way he did the transition um, from outside zone one to two, it wasn't really a flick. He kind of drove to, the car kind of slided to the outside zone too. But doing a flick and risking everything is what it's <laughs> 
Here we go, number 283, Tsubasa Takizawa is gonna be up right here, driving down out of the 3-2-1 into this outer zone one. He's with Zek Nova Japan and Superstar Channel. Here he is, look at that beautiful drive into outer zone two, able to hug, could be a little tighter in that inside clip, rolling around to outer zone three, beautiful job. Go check out his Superstar Channel that he has on YouTube. He's in that beautiful gold JZX100. I don't know if it's gold, it's probably more of a champagne mark two. Yeah, champagne gold. Champagne gold. Champagne gold. So right here, uh, very nice job by um, Takizawa. Very smooth, and I would have to say, I'm not going to say there's going to there's a whole lot of commitment here um, with the flick, but it looks like he's doing what he can. Tries to fill outside zone one and outside zone two. I would have to say an average way to go from outside zone one to two, but he is on throttle pretty quick. Um, it looks like there's a lot of throttle throughout the track, so uh, definitely going to be. Um, Definitely gonna gonna be a very good um, uh, first run score for him. Yeah, they're fixing that pile, and that's definitely a hot spot. I know, uh, viewing back to the 2019 Fuji event, that definitely was a hot spot for a lot of the pylons getting knocked out. But there you go. There's some of the fans. There you go. So. Brazilian fans right there. So there you go. 81. Not bad, definitely the average area we're looking at right now, so. Yeah, I think the he has a couple more points to pick up at the line. Uh, he did miss out, uh, inside clip one uh, by far, and uh, a few here and there. So uh, looking forward to seeing what he's gonna do for the second run, but now we are at uh, the next driver, car number 330, Shigehisa Sasayama. He is driving the team M2 Racing JZS Motor Chaser. Here he is coming around. Initiating right at about the one cone, two to one cone, coming into outer zone one. Definitely miss outer zone one right there. Outer zone two. He's diving really far back on inside clip and trying to hold it through outer zone three, but struggled throughout that whole entire course in uh, getting in those zones or finding those zones. That's right, at Okayama, he, um, um, was, is this the same car? I mean, he totaled that car at the wall and yeah, he's he, back now so I hope he's all right and also you know there might be a different car I'm not sure but yes he missed outside zone one and he was very late at the transition so pretty much uh, like Kenny was saying earlier if you miss the outside zone one it's gonna change the pace throughout the track so he was too shallow on the line that pushed the line more forward where his uh, transition was a little bit later he transitioned late, so he definitely didn't fill outside zone two either. He was way past it, and by him being uh, or by him carrying the car way too out, uh, it was obvious that he missed inside clip one. So that's like a three, or he messed up three of the areas because of um, Sasayama's gonna be taking the a mistake. 66. Yeah, those mistakes definitely added up. Got a score in the books, but I don't know if it's going to be enough, so definitely going to have to pick up the pace. But like you said, that damage he sustained in the wall in the, what is it, outer zone three yep. in uh, Okayama definitely probably changed the dynamic of the car a little, and he had to kind of, obviously they fixed it, so. Hey, and you know what? Um, I think he has uh, the in-car view of the wreck online somewhere on YouTube, I believe. But I would have to say, you know what, the Hans device and, you know, the safety features that these cars have um, to save the drivers from getting any injury is uh, very impressive. And I think you were able to see that on that video, too. So, yeah, because he went he went to a He's dead stop. But here we are. Number 93 is up next. Monkey Ito in his Hirano tires. JZX Chaser. Yeah, these safety, all these safety features these cars have definitely obviously have their benefit, but that just shows right there, that accident, that how serious you have to take that. But here he is coming into inside clip one. Beautiful job in the inside clip, but those outer zones were definitely not quite met, and definitely he left a lot of points on the uh, course right there. Yeah, so it doesn't look like he was throwing hard angle throughout the track and he was also missing the outside zones it looks like he was just rushing through the track and basically yes there we do not look at speed the faster the the better but i'm not going to say the faster the better if you're missing the outside zones or not throwing angle 
because it looks like he's rushing through the track and pretty much he's just kind of trying to finish the track as fast as possible. But we have no way, um, we're, we're not measuring speeds here and we're not really worried about the speed uh, portion of it. We don't uh, judge anything that has to do with any speed. So as long as you're on throttle, a lot of angle, running the line you're supposed to be in, doing a hard flick at initiation or transition, um, that's the key uh, to having a successful uh, qualify go. run. 74 in the books, but at the same time, too, we have to realize, yes, this is qualifying, but they're trying to give us, give us a picture of a lead run. This is, tomorrow's going to be tandem battles. Yeah, so like, they have to get their best here to get the right scores if, to be in those If zones. you want to run away from the chase car, you could just go drag race. Or you could just That's go, true. you could just go and do time attack or something, or, or, or grip racing, because it's like, we want you to be at a certain area on track, and if you're not there and trying to cut the track, uh, cut the track up, and not want to make the outside zone outside or not not want to fill the outside zones or run a really shallow run it's like then just drive straight put some slicks on you know drag that's slicks. true go, that, go that's straight. a good point like, seriously but here we are coming up next a guy that likes to throw a lot of angles is going to be number seven junji yamamoto in his 5x 2jz fd3s project rx7 that's right you heard it right he's got a 2j under the hood May make a few people mad, but let's see how hard of angle he's going to throw coming into this 3-2-1. Bringing it around to this outer zone. Here he is. Not too bad. Could be a little deeper into that outer zone, but there he is filling outer zone two. And there's that angle I was talking about. Trying to rip around and hold it all the way through to outer zone three. Wasn't quite deep enough in that inside clip, but you saw how hard he flicked that angle in the outer zone too, which is cool, but it's not fulfilling the rest of the track. Yeah, so right now it did look cool. There was a lot of angle that he threw, but definitely not smooth because he did not, there was a lot of adjustment going on um, inside the car. Let's go ahead and check that out right here. Like you said, okay job on the outside zone one and nice flick here but after right here it's almost a backwards entry then there you go he has to do a lot of adjustment to put the car back to where it's supposed to be totally misses inside clip one um, he pretty much makes the v-line coming from outside zone two um, inside clip one isn't even in the picture um, in this line so that's definitely not the way we want uh, the drivers to run the track uh, line wise and also uh, style wise as well so um, but he was committed Oh, after that um, outer after zone, flick. yeah. Um, I just wish that he didn't do all the adjustment and uh, have to do all that to, to put the car back on track. Or Yeah, it definitely jeopardized the fluid fluidity of that transition. Here we are. Let's see the score. And There you go, 76 in the books. And, you know, I, I think backwards entry in that type of stuff is really it's cool you know it's it's something cool to see but at the same time it's really hard to judge number one number two if you have a chase car chasing you it's like what are they supposed to do yeah they can't they're supposed to get behind you but your car is the rear end of the car is facing you know backwards so it's really hard to place the, the chasing car so you're right but next up is going to be number 515 nobushige kumakubo in his speeds to racing with team orange 370 <laughs> This is the VR38 car, right? Yeah, so he debuted at last event. It looked like it was a successful car. Yeah, he did a good um, job. He, uh, full fourth place is what he uh, landed at Hokoy Hokayama. So here he is coming around to outer zone one. Not too bad in outer zone one. Could be a little deeper. Along with outer zone two. Pretty safe in those zones. But here he is coming to that outer zone three. Not a bad run at all. Pretty safe, but for the most part, was uh, trying to get all the way into those zones. A little shallow in the zones. Could be a little deeper, but beautiful car, beautiful build, and man, what a jam-packed engine inside there. Yeah, so I would have to say, um, I'm not going to say that it's the most exciting run, but very, very smooth. So I would have to say very fluid right here. There is probably no adjustments that he's making to have to make the car go yeah. to where he's at, where he wants to be at. So it looks like he was really concentrating on the line. So he probably came down and said, you know what, he wants to you know, fill the line, uh, fill the outside zone as much as possible, as smoothly as possible, and not make you know huge errors and corrections. There you go, 82. You were right, though. The fluidity on that was beautiful. Like You saw no hesitation in any of it, no corrections, nothing like that. But like I was saying, he landed 
fourth place, and the only reason why he got fourth was because he had mechanical issues, and they tried to get the car running again, but they had some kind of issues. I forgot yeah, one of the I sensors mean, or whatever. And I think it was just a brand new car that was already built. Yeah. Um, so maybe they weren't familiar with the, you know, what it needed and stuff like but that. But you know, he had a good solid chance of podium though. Yeah. Here, yeah. Up at number 18, Tetsuya Iha from Kartus Okinawa with Nor in his GRS 204. Uh, 204 crown right here coming around in that big body into outer zone one. Oh, feels outside zone one. Nice outside wow, zone nice two. Zone outside Not zone bad two. at all. Here he is. Oh, can he oh. hold on to it? Correction right there in the inside clip one. But man, beautiful job from outer zone one to outer zone two. But looks like that outer zone two is a little bit too deep and wasn't able to catch himself to come to that inside clip. That's the what, 18 series crown? Yeah, I believe so. No, yeah. no, 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 it's a 200. Oh, 200 series, there you go. So we just have to double check to make sure that he is not incompleting um, right in front of us uh, the inside clip one, well, the only inside clip we, we have right here. So look at this, a little bit too much and, yeah, I don't know, that looks pretty close. Yeah, that's gonna be a close call. That rumble strips, those rumble strips are pretty serious. We were checking them out yesterday and you know, you catch a little bit of that rumble strip, it's gonna throw you off and you can see how it kind of caught his rear and threw him off a little bit in that outer zone too. But yeah, a lot of y'all are thinking like, man, that big car, wonder how much that thing weighs. It's surprisingly enough, they actually refabricated those doors and it's actually car, uh, actually, uh, what is it, fiberglass doors that he didn't, they did a huge weight reduction last year, bringing it into this year, so. Beautiful car, beautiful driving, but let's see. what score they're going to give him. The wind's starting to pick up. Yeah, to the left of these uh, mounds right here is Mount Fuji, so hopefully they'll get a view of that later on in the, in the competition. Waiting for the judges to get the score in. They're definitely looking over to make sure that that huge correction wasn't a straightening to the point where it's going to be an incomplete. Yeah, and I'd have to say uh, everything looked good until he was leaving outside zone two, and it looked like he threw a little bit too much angle, washed out, and also he had to, you know, try to help the car out. So it was almost a straightening, um, but he did uh, kind of play it off and kept drifting. So we are going to score it, but um, definitely not going to be super high because of that mistake that he made. So there you go, 70 points right there. So kind of in that average zone right now. I wouldn't say it's safe, but it seems like we're doing, we're getting a lot of results like Okayama. We were getting like a 70s, 80s, low 80s range that yeah. kind of made us a little nervous but on it, who's know, making top 32. Yeah, I think a lot of the guys are gonna kind of move up on score on the second yeah. run and it looks like that's the trend. I'm gonna lately. have to cut you off. Oh yeah, there you go, man, beautiful this car, car right here, 168 Masayomi Noah. So you saw her last last event in her white car. She's debuting this brand new JZX100 she built beautiful with Hey with All Heymant pink. TM Labo. I know you're chiming in because it's beautiful. Here it is right here. Let's see how she's gonna do. Bigger engine. Whoa. Look at that. Feeling that zone coming out, making a statement. There she is right there, coming into outer zone three. Finishing, trying to finish strong right there. Beautiful job by Masayomi Noah right there. And man. See, so I know if we're gonna talk about speed, that probably wasn't fast, but she was throwing a lot of angle, gangster angle at the outside zone one, Phil's outside zone one very good. I'm not gonna say the flick and going to outside zone two uh, was as exciting as the outside zone one, but uh, definitely something cool, look at that. Holds the angle, a little bit timid there on outside zone two, that's gonna hurt the style score, but uh, let's go ahead and get into um, I'll give her that. She was able to go from outer zone two to and correct herself and get to that inside clip and then try to drag it all the way to outer zone three because that's a huge stress, especially whenever you do a correction. So not too bad. Beautiful car. I know you were saying uh, the car build, she had it in the works for quite some time, but it's good to see her out here. She's in the three. There you go, 84. See, look at that. So she builds the, uh, the line judge. She gets a 27 point for the line judge. So I think the outside zone one and outside zone two definitely is a big part of the line and the angle because there's 10 points each. If you miss those, 
that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of points uh, docked off. So, a uh, very good job for a first run for uh, Masayo Minoa in a new car. In a new car right there. And here we go, number 73, Kira Saito in his West Auto with good ride, JZX100 Chaser. Coming around the turn, coming up to the 3-2-1 and already initiating, coming in that three cone. Here he is, coming into outer zone one. Not too bad, let's see this flick coming back to outer zone two, not quite aggressive on the flick. You know, missing inside clip one right there, rolling into outer zone three, which is not bad in outer zone three, but definitely could have made a harder flick for that style in that inside clip. There you go, let's see this replay. Yeah, once again, um, I would have to say he was very fluid until he came to inside clip, the inside clip area where there was a lot of adjustment going on uh, for him to be, make it out to outside zone three. Right here, um, he's on throttle, I like that, but at the same time, after outside zone two right there, um, for him to be able to get back on gas and go to outside zone three, um, he had to do some small adjustments there, which is gonna hurt him a little bit on the style side of the score but it looks like a very average um, run by uh, Saito. The fans fighting this win though. Yeah, it's like hard to carry that food into your mouth. Look at that, <laughs> because of the wind. Yeah, well, let's see what Saito's gonna get from the judges on his run. Man, I'm telling you, it's pretty cold <laughs> today. There you go, 74. 74, so not bad. Like I said, that's not quite the safe zone. Not sure what exactly it is, where the safe zone is, but next up at the line is gonna be Kenji Yamada in his Larada Racing S15. Yeah, so I think, was it last event? He blew his motor, or it was the event before that, I think. Yeah, it was the event before that. Here he is coming through the chicane. Hey, why are you breathing so hard? Oh, that's the wind. Here we go. Oh. Here he is coming around the bend into the 3 2 1. Already initiated, coming into outer zone one. Not bad in outer zone one. Coming around. Beautiful. Oh, but can he hold it? And he definitely had a little bit of washout right there from outer zone two to inside clip one. But yeah, definitely going to be the struggle for some of these guys coming from outer zone two and trying to carry it through, even though they want to carry that momentum because outer zone three is so far out, they can't be too aggressive because they're going to completely miss inside clip one. Yeah, so that's almost borderline in, uh, unchaseable lead right there. Um, so we would have to dock him for, I would have to dock him for the style scoring and he totally missed inside clip one. Um, so it doesn't look like a very clean run by Yamada. I'm surprised because he usually has, you know, uh, I guess there's a lot of flair under him. He, he's like a very exciting driver to see, but it looks like he couldn't get his um, uh, line and strategy together. So, I don't know where. I'm trying to look for where the camera, camera shoots. There, there you go, yeah, 67. Yeah. yeah, so 67, that's like the second lowest score that we have for the qualify, and the first one is actually uh, Sasayama, which he got a 66. So, um, yeah, definitely going to have to step up his game for the second run, and good luck to him. But next let's go on. Uh, let's move on to the next driver. Next driver is going to be number 13, Yasuhiro Takaki. That's right. Takakaki. I said it right. Takaki <laughs> in the T-square with DGR, good ride, 180SX. Dude, like people are like 66, 68. Dude, people are pretty spot on. Like literally, we don't have to do this anymore. We can I just know. ask you guys to give us a score. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, taking a guess. Uh, but here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and check out Takaki's first run. Coming around SR here to the 3 2 one. Yeah, SR powered. See how he's going to hold up? I know he struggled through that outer zone two. But here he is, full throttle, sending it, coming into outer zone one to the inside clip. Not bad right there. Real hesitant, didn't quite commit 100% to that outer zone two to that inside clip transition, but was definitely in those zones. 
I would have to say um, a very average uh, style score from my side of it because nothing super and not nothing with a crazy flair there, but he kept it as smooth as possible. A little bit of wobble there. Um, transition, not a high angle rate from one to another. He does throw a lot of angle towards the end of outside zone or through outside zone too. Um, very, very average um, um, run. And I think for your because, standpoint, you know, yeah, yeah, because definitely for a style standpoint, it didn't have that flair. But you know that's where that calculation, what they got to sacrifice, and all that, and definitely coming from a, a SR yeah. full four yeah, cylinder. I, think, I expect. I think more. not having power here is going to actually hurt you a lot because you can't do something super exciting when you have to air up the tires just to keep the car drifting. You know, yeah. so you're taking away grip. Well, 82. there you go, to 82. Yeah, not bad at all. But he does fill the line. Looked at the line score; it's 28 points. Yeah. So that's what he shifted himself to, saying, "Hey, you know what? I'm not going to be able to get a crazy angle score or a style score. I'm just going to go for." the line and uh looks like it's working out for him next up is going to be number 444 takatoshi imamida in his 5x tire navigate pinsky krc sylvia s14 yeah so the first car, he had a big gt wing on it massive it looks like wing. He, he, it looks like he took it off probably because he had too much traction he knew that this wind was going to take him away but yeah for sure he uh took that in halfway through practice he took it out and dude Ooh, look, look at this that. look at the flare he's nice, throwing now look at that Throwing down, coming to that inside clip. Here he is, coming into outer zone three. Didn't hit outer zone three, but man, that first two zones, beautiful job. All right, so let me go ahead and watch the replay because that was, uh, I would have to say as a style score, or as a style judge, there were small mistakes that he made here and there, but I would have to say that's probably the most exciting style score um, run that I could tell you. Uh, from just what I saw right now, but look at that. Holds a lot of angle, bam, from one side to another. Uh, good job. Um, and that transition right there, no bobble, nice fluidity through that transition. It looked all normal and it's definitely chaseable too. Yes, and uh, we want you to have the style, we want you to run the high, high style score, but obviously chaseable. That's yeah. why the backwards entry isn't gonna work. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah, the camera's on you. Brazilian fans right there. Is I, that? I know Yukio Fausto said that he's going to have a lot of fans out here. His sponsors actually pushed a lot of fans out and brought them out here. So I know everybody's excited to see him go. But there you go, 85 for Ima Maida. See, so he did have to sacrifice a line uh, part of it. Uh, but uh, I would have to say, as a style judge, um, that was very exciting to see. But we have to get on the techni technical side of it, too. You have to obviously be on the right line, and you have to make sure you carry the car to the places that you need it to be on the track. So next up is going to be number 64, Yoshimi Mori, with the Team Mori, Team Mori S15. He, uh, yeah, 64. Nope. Actually, there's a cone down again. So it'll be a bit, but yeah, 64. What's significant about that? Most of y'all probably already know, but yeah, he's 64 years old, our oldest FDJ driver, and I, I think he's the oldest pro drift driver. Yeah, probably anywhere. Yeah. I'm not sure anywhere yeah. around the world because there are a lot of people that, you know, enjoys drifting. But at the same time, at a bigger, a bigger scale um, competition, I guess, maybe he's one of the oldest and that's a lot on the body, especially you fans out there that probably do it recreationally, the grassroots drifting and stuff. It's hard on the body. Dude, I'm 43, and my back hurts for no reason. <laughs> I'm 35, and I have a broken hip. So, hey, look, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I was going to ask him when his birthday was because I, I think we've been talking about him being 64 for the past two years. No, he was 63 last, last year. Last year, okay. Yeah, so he changes year, his, yeah, he changes his number every no, year. So I want to see what month at least – is the switch going to okay, happen? Yeah, yeah. Because I want to know, you know, next year, obviously, he's probably going to be 65. Uh, but at the same time, you know, is it going to be mid-season? Is it going to be, like, in June or July or something? That's something I want to ask him later. Exactly. But I always get confused between his car and uh, the other car that's exactly like his. Oh, yeah. I think they, they roll as a team. Um, Yoshimura, that's yeah, it. Yoshimura, Yoshimura's yeah. car looks exactly the same. They roll as a team, but Yoshimura's car has an SR in it, and uh, Mori's car has a 2J in it. And it's a mean uh, built car. Yeah. He has the um, auto auto service Mori. Okay. 
here he is. Coming around the bend to the 3 2 1. Yeah, definitely he can throw his car with some angles. So let's see what he's going to do here. Coming in that outer zone one. Not too bad in the outer zone one. Real subtle on that flick to outer zone two. And had a little bit of a uh, bobble right there from outer zone two. Rolling into outer zone three. Pretty safe run, but that bobble definitely is going to make an effect too. So real safe overall. Probably not what you wanted to see in the style department, but. He left a lot of points on the board for for that. Yeah, so right here, as you see the replay, very smooth. Um, right there after the outside zone two, there's a bobble there, um, but very smooth. And I'm not gonna say it's a high rate of angle to the other when he's doing the transition, but very, um, an average, I believe, job. Uh, by Modi, but uh, I don't know what the line and angle uh, judges are going to give him score. So there you there go, you yeah, go. 81 points. So I would have to say a high 70s and low 80s is probably the average score of yeah. what we have uh, for today, for the first runs. Not so, bad by Mori, but like I said, he he left a lot for style that he could bring back out. So Yeah, but I think we are finally getting to the middle of... The, uh, the first, yeah, yeah, the middle of the pack of the first um, qualified runs by all these drivers. So. Next, we have car number 23, Yuji Saito driving the Team Next Dream with Total Car Shop Glitter S15 packed with another VR38. Yeah, and he actually sustained a lot of damage at Okuibuki, which was too bad. Damage. They were able to get the car back together, came out to Okoyama, performed, but here he is again. He's a very exciting driver to see. So. He is. Look at that. Coming oh. in outer zone one. Ooh, dipped a few tires in outer zone one. Let's see how he's going to pick it up right here from outer zone two. Transitioning around. Not quite getting all the way into outer zone three right there. Yeah, but uh, I guess the style uh, judge side of it, I would have to say definitely um, exciting to see. I mean, he almost went off on outside zone one, and that's going to hurt him on the line score. Um, but very smooth, on throttle. A lot of commitment right through there, too. Not a whole lot of uh, corrections or anything and adjustments. So I would have to say very smooth, and I'm not going to say the most exciting, but... Um, Definitely had the commitment, put it that way. There you yeah, go. But not going to say, not going to say, um, not going to say there's a lot of uh, a juice there when he's uh, transitioning from outside zone one to two. See, look at that. Oh, 82. 82 points. So that was a, see, that's the type of stuff that we miss out here because, you know, the, the, the fans out there looking excited, you exactly. know, having a good time. I mean, even though we could see it on the live chat, everybody throwing their flags out, their scores out, their love out there and stuff, and the appreciation of some of these drivers, it's not as real as it is in person. So it's awesome to see that. But thank you all out there for definitely viewing in. Well, I was so. about to say, you just... Uh you just um, saved yourself right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough about myself. Here you go. Our next driver up is going to be number 53. Already on the track. Coming around the bend is going to be... It's Nori Yoshimura. Yeah, sorry. I flipped my uh, score thing around. Here he is coming into outer zone two. Not quite all the way into outer zone two. Can he pick it up right here to outer zone three? Not too like bad it. collecting it in outer zone three, but definitely struggled right there through that outer zone two to that transition. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to keep his car together and keep it in drift motion. Looked like he was struggling. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, Yoshimura's his car is just like Modi's car. Similarities, but SR powered. Here he is, there you go, you saw it right there, coming in the inside clip and dragging it all the way out to that outer zone three right there. Yeah, it looked like he was just fighting for the car to just stay sideways. Um, not, or n nothing crazy or impressive on the um, the transition from outside zone one to two. Man, I'm actually cold and my jaw is like having a hard time moving. Like my mouth is just like. I, I finally got the sun on me, so this is the one time I'm not gonna complain the sun's on me. <laughs> But look at that, I can't complain. The beautiful skies definitely way better than two years ago when there was a typhoon they were fighting. So 
All oh y'all fans God, out there, I know you me. guys hate the rain just like I do because it's not as exciting and it's not the drifting I want to see. Beautiful weather. I love seeing the smoke from these cars. And there you go, 75 for Yoshimura. Yeah, but God, hey, online fans, Kenny was favoring the live audience more than you guys, just, no. to, just to remind you. you no, why was it? I thought that was don't really be putting, messed up. Don't, that be, putting really that, messed don't up. be putting bad juju on me like that. <laughs> I love y'all out there. Y'all are actually appreciating me a little bit. But hey, appreciate some of these commercials. There's a few new ones out there. We're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back with y'all. アイスガードやる。Made in Japan. Breed. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Tento to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshiku. Champion of Torta Men of Clutch. Ogura Racing Brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid, bounty. やる。
Made in Japan. Breed. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. Tenton to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology o gyoshiku. Champion o toru tame no clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. Brightness called brilliant, blinding, and vivid. Valenti. Welcome back, everybody, to round six of the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan 2021 series. This is the final round for here at Fuji International Speed Bay in the Shizuoka Prefecture. I'm so glad now that there was not all y'all out there online aren't here because you would have been laughing at the struggle that I was making to get to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a sorry. Um, it's not like they take the break because just for Kenny, so uh, yeah, you guys yeah. didn't have to wait because of him. It was so just convenient. I had to use the restroom at the yeah. same time, but. All right, so now we have uh, the second half of the first qualifying runs of these drivers, and that is car number 80, Yuta Komatsu in the Komatsu Racing IS350, packed with the 2JZ, heard he got a 3.1 liter or bigger, more power and torque. Let's see how he's gonna do for his first run. Here he is coming around the bend. Ooh, initiating hard and early in that outer zone, uh, coming into outer zone one right there. But yeah, that three, two, one initiated hard. You saw that hard flick. Let's see how he's gonna, ooh, hold it all the way through to that inside clip, carrying it all the way out to outer zone three. Missed a little bit of that, or missed inside clip one and tried dragging it all the way to outer zone three. All right, so I would have to say there's a lot of commitment um, coming into uh, the track right now, but um, he ain't washed out on you know the inside clip. Here he is, right there, coming in that three, two, one, right there. Yeah, definitely missed outer zone one, flicked, dipped a few tires there in the outer zone two, right there. Missed yeah. the inside clip and then struggled to get all the way out to outer zone three. Yeah, so I really liked the flick and I was I was like, oh, is it going to be, you know, a good or, or a higher uh, style score? But after that, you know, he had to keep he had to wait for the car to settle yeah. uh, to get back on the track. And then that was a big adjustment for him um, to run through in front of the inside clip and after the outside zone, too. So um, very close to a pretty aggressive style score run but at the same time he did miss the outside zone one um, that's going to hurt him on the line score as well and there so. you go the line score definitely took a hit got a 75 right there 
Yeah, and I, I, I believe that the line has a lot to do with this because if he, if he could have reached all the way to the outside zone one and did the same flick, I think it would have uh, pushed him back a little bit, um, a car length, uh, more towards the inside of the track where he could have been a little bit more stable yeah. and made a better line throughout the whole track. Definitely so. that, that initiation into that 3 two, one that hard, aggressive one, maybe was probably too much, and he probably could have, you know, Throttled yeah, back there, dialed waited, it back yeah, dialed little it back bit, a little yeah. just so he could get all the way out to that outer zone one. But here we are up next is going to be 963 Daichi Mizutani in the Mizutani Jidosha Marusho Racing S15. So we'll see. I know, uh, I think it was last round of the round before he upgraded and got a 2J now, right? Mm -hmm. Before he was rolling with the S SR, pretty heavily powered SR, but... Uh, yeah, so this is a perfect uh, track to showcase the power that he has. So I'm um, looking forward to an exciting qualifier run by Mizutani. Here he is coming around to around the bend. Already initiated coming into that 3-2-1. Here he is coming to outer zone one. Not too bad filling outer zone one. There's that flick coming around. Definitely could have filled a little bit more of the outer zone two, but able to get to that inside clip. Carrying it all the way around, but not getting all the way out to outer zone three. I yeah, feel like I keep repeating myself of not getting all the way out to those zones, but that's been the struggle for a lot of these drivers so far. Yeah. Um, so I would have to say that if you're running a shallower angle, it's harder to go to the outside because the rear of the car is closer to the inside of the car or inside of the track, right? So definitely um, it looks like he was... Same as a couple drivers ago, it looks like he's kind of rushing through the track and not giving it the time to, you know, fill the zones, um, do a hard flick. Yeah, um, I, I hear what you're saying. You, he's almost like they think speed's a factor, but like you said before, speed is not a factor out here. It, I mean, fluidity, that hard angle, that aggression, all that is what they need what? to give. You know what? It's it's like you can run. Okay, let's say if you're 10 kilometers faster than one car, but you, you're not throwing angle or you're not, um, you know, doing a hard flick, it doesn't look as exciting. You could be 10 kilometers slower and go. still look exciting. 82 for his first run. Yeah, so there you go. Um, he did um, get a higher line score. Um, definitely something he was probably going for, just like some of the other drivers as well. If they can't do the, you know, crazy flare, um, exciting run, they can get technical and get closer on the line, so... Um, let's see what he can do for the second run. Well, let's move along to the next driver, car 448. Yoshi Aisika Asaki in his Origin Labo Racing S15. This one's actually powered by an SR. Power early on in the season, gained a little bit more, but he's definitely performed pretty well. But he's solid in the middle of the pack right now, able to break that, not able to break that in the last few rounds. So let's see how he's going to do here. Coming in that outer zone one, beautiful job in that outer nice. zone one. See how he's going to commit to nice. this, coming into this inside clip. Ah, uh, definitely missed it right there, but trying to drag it all the way out to that outer zone three. The first half of that was not bad at all. He definitely just needs to clean that second half. I mean, he definitely got points on the board, but he left a lot out there on that second half of that course. Man, if there wasn't that correction after the outside zone two, that would have been a pretty um, pretty good uh, style score uh, from my side of it. But let's go ahead and check this out. He fills outside zone one fairly well. And right here, an average job by flicking, but he goes deep into the angle. But right there, he looks like he had to pull some angle out or uh, readjust his car to get it back on track where he wanted it to go. So that's going to hurt him um, for the style score, style side of uh, the score. But there you there go. You that's go. still an 83. So 83. Um, I would have to say he's not running a crazy horsepower car, but he has a really well-balanced amount of grip and power in that thing. Uh, right now, so looking forward to what he's going to do for the second run. Here we are. Next up is going to be number 100, Andrew Gray, in his Team Cosmo with Power Vehicles Lexus RC. Yeah. This this course is built for this car, hands down. Or, or or it might be this car is built for this course because I think Fuji Speedway has been a little bit around longer than the RC. <laughs> Way to really, really understand and manipulate my horse. But you are right on that. This car is definitely built for this course. 
Uh, yesterday, before we got track set up, we got to see some insane Mercedes out here ripping and stuff. So it's like seeing that out there and then seeing this today, it's insane. And then especially with this car coming up. Yeah, it's a big car, but it is a big track too. So it's uh, like a match made in heaven, you know. This is uh, something that, I mean, I know um, Andy always talks about, you know, Bama being his favorite track. And since we haven't been back here last year um, for uh, FD Japan, now we're back in Fuji, and I'm pretty sure that he probably likes this track as much as, you know, oh, yeah. Obama and And I know the last round at Okayama, he definitely struggled, especially that outer zone one. He washed out on one of his uh, qualifying runs. Yeah, he did. And so he had to pick it up, was able to pick it up. Here he is now, going to prove himself. Coming up to the 3-2-1, this is the last round of the for this 2021 series. Here he is. Zone three and filling outer zone three. All right, so I would have to say not a crazy amount of flick, but very fluid. Uh, but it definitely looks like he was rushing through the track. And I'm not going to say that he was, it didn't look like he was super um, deep on the angles either. Um, but he's just getting a score on the board right now there. Um, fills the outside zones fairly well. Uh, makes it into the inside clip. So I would have to say very textbook style drifting, very smooth um, by Andrew Gray. But yeah, you left a little bit in the outer zone one and two in that style portion of flicking it from outer zone one to outer zone two. So we'll see here what the score is going to come out to. So... Everybody out here. Um, there you go, 87. Oh, 87. Yeah, so um, he does a good job on the line. He fills his own very well. So he's averaging and making a good, uh, or he did he did get a good score yeah, for his he, first run. So definitely going to be that's uh, our, something to look at for his second run. That's actually our top score right now, 87. Mm -hmm. So he's our points lead for qualifying. But we still have a good chunk of cars coming up. So coming up right now is going to be number five, Tomoki Tanaka in his V-style good ride with Tetsujin, JZX100 Chaser. Yeah, this guy has been um, ripping. Yeah, I was watching his uh, practice runs earlier, but it was like, whoa, you know, so. The wow points. <laughs> Here he is coming Look at that. Already He's already initiated. sideways. Already He's sideways. ready to go. There he is, coming in outer zone one. Let's see this flick coming around. Real subtle though, not what I was expecting. Didn't even get to outer zone one. Missed the inside clip there, trying to carry out. Real early in the inside uh, outer zone one. And yeah, definitely not what we were expecting. Not sure what happened in that mix. Yeah, that was really um, not a good run by Tanaka right there. And from what we see from the judging stand to outside zone three area, looks like he even incomplete it right here. So I don't know if there's something wrong with the car or something going on behind the wheel there, but uh, looks like he is not keep, he, he couldn't put together a good one right right there pretty much he's straightened out um so that's probably going to be an incomplete um uh, and also before that too a very sloppy run leading up to that area too so that's going to be really hard to chase as well so um the number of um mistakes that were made throughout that yeah everything yeah. added together too definitely not a clean run but we did see him you know punch out some crazy runs early at practice hopefully he can bring that back for the second run so let's go ahead and move along uh, to car number 19, Yuichi Amagai. He is in his green S15 Silvia with the 2JZ. Perfect style with good ride. He is a uh, veteran now than a DJ. Uh, he's been to many other events here. So let's go ahead and see how he's going to tackle this track. Here he is coming around through that 3 2 1. Beautiful job coming in that outer zone 1. Right there on the edge of the outer zone 1 and outer zone 2 right there. Trying to uh, bobble right there coming in out of out inside clip one but here he is finishing strong from that outer zone three all right so i would have to say if he didn't have that um correction that he had at in clip um 
the in-clip area after the outside zone too, which is probably the hardest area because everybody's making mistakes there. Um, but uh, that would probably bump up the score as a style judge. Uh, a lot there. Looks like he's filling the outside zones very good. I like the way he uh, kind of slid the car out. Um, maybe a little bit too much outside zone two to fill the zone. Um, just from outside zone two to in clip, that's the area that he had to uh, kind of kind of put together something to get out to the outside zone two. So uh, definitely, he's in there at 84 points for uh, I'm a guy. So I would like to see how he's going to tackle the second run. Um, very exciting driver to see. So, but here we are. Next up is going to be number 99, Kazuya Matsukawa, and his team Droopy AE85, powered by a 1GR. So we'll see how he's going to do on this track. Definitely performed pretty well at Okayama. Here he is coming through the chicane, ready to go. Coming all the way from Hiroshima up here to Fuji. Let's how he sees coming into that outer zone one right here. Two tires off. Dip the tire Fuji right there, coming in that outer zone two. Coming around to that inside clip, being able to carry through outer zone three right there. There's a lot of throttle though. Was commitment and throttle all the way throughout that course. Sounded a lot quieter than I'm used to, though. Yeah, let's see right here. Coming around. Yeah, a lot of throttle going through there from outside zone one. Kind of uh, doesn't do a transition right away. Kind of waits and then gets into outside zone two. Let's see what the scores are for the judges. Yeah, so I would have to say there's a lot of throttle, but at the same time when he was doing the transition from outside zone one to two, it looked like he took the safe route out where he waited for the car to be steady and didn't really flick it so hard. So, um, so let's see. Not well, not not a lot of ho there's not a lot of uh, mistakes that he made either. Yeah, we're getting so a lot of to say. mid to lower 80s. Yeah. But yeah, we got a few questions. Why don't they use? Has FD ever used the last three corners? The, the difficult part, we were actually talking about yeah, the different we want setups to, on but the it, track. It really depends on where we can put the judging stand, where the, the spectators, spectators can yeah. be. There's a lot of things. And um, being Bam, able to... 85. There you go, 85. So being able to have all the cars go out to, or let's say the spectators going there, how far we are from the pits, if we can make a... Uh, um, what you want to call it? I'm sorry, I just had a brain fart, but... Burnout, uh, well, the box. burnout box as well, and also the hot pits out there. Yeah. Because this is a far, this is a big this track, is, yeah, so it's really point, far from the pits. Yeah, that's a big thing. This is a 2.8 mile track, and they're already, what is it, a few turns down in order to get the to the hot pit or the yeah hot pits. So, we'll talk more about that. But up next is 666 Shinichi Mano in his Charlie Boy with Vitor tire. One V or yeah, one Via. Here he is coming around the bend, taking a little slope around this bend. Different approach coming up to this 3-2-1, and here he is initiating late into that last cone right there, that one cone coming into outer zone two. Real subtle in outer zone two, not a hard flick, aggressive flick, but here he is finishing strong into outer zone three. And yeah, definitely took a slower approach to this track and wasn't quite able to make it all the way to the outside of those zones. Yeah, I would have to say very uh, fluid, but at the same time very safe. Um, very average job as uh, looking at it as a style judge, but uh, very clean job by uh, Mano, but not exciting to see. Um, really depends on what the angle and the line judge gives him to. Um, but I would have to say that he did a very average job throughout um, all three judges, maybe. So we'll see here what the judges have to say. Spectators nice and comfortable fighting this wind. Yeah, definitely a uh, windy day today, and uh, I hope it's not like this tomorrow. 
but I'm not going to ask for any more. I mean, we're, we're right at the base of Mount Fuji. There you go to the left right there is Mount Fuji, not too far from us. So we're kind of in that, that zone of where the wind rolls off the mountain. So, and you can see there's already snow, so that wind is pretty chilly. Yeah, Mount Fuji, I mean, uh, we were talking about that earlier on the way up here too, but a very different looking mountain uh, compared to a lot of the other volcanic uh, mountains that they have yeah. all over the world. They're usually, you know, number of mountains put together. So it's like a huddle. Mount Fuji is kind of a loner. It is. He's kind of like, yo, I'm going to chill over here by myself. But it's cool because it's such an iconic. Yeah, that's why he's like, man, I'm cool enough, man. I don't need my yeah. boys. I'm, I'm, I'm here by myself. It's like an iconic staple. There you go, 77, staple to Japan. Like, you think of Japan, that's one of the first things you see on an advertisement is Mount Fuji because it's that stereotypical, I guess you could say, mountain or volcano, you could say. Ninjas, samurais, Mount Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. Sushi, you forgot sushi. Oh, yeah, that's right. And ram or ramen, ramen uh, give or take. Yeah. I'll take some right now because it's nice and chilly. But yeah, here we are. Really Next up is going to be number 17, Jin Horino in his good ride Team Tops Racing with Project Mew S15. He had yeah. a few struggled runs during his practice runs. I think spun out once or twice. He was, he's always been able to collect himself and put a solid run down. So let's see how safe he's going to be here on his first run. Or is he going to throw down an insane run with hard hard angle but here he is coming out as a one dip to tire suit but it looks good right there coming around real subtle on the flip coming to outer zone two but able to get into the inside clip dragging it out not quite all the way out to outer zone three so just played it a little safe to get some points on the board yeah you just pretty much said what i wanted to say it was um yeah i mean um there's a lot of throttle uh, somewhat exciting run, but at the same time, you know, the movement of the car, um, yes, it seems safe. It's not like he's running a crazy amount of angle where it looks like, you know, this is a 90 degree to 90 degree turn. Um, so I would have to say um, another, uh, probably going to be another average, safe run, clean average run. But yeah, so this is the last round of Formula Drift Japan. We'll actually have two more rounds, so d definitely stay tuned to Formula Drift Japan because we'll have FDJ2, the last two rounds of FDJ2 hosted uh, the day after Thanksgiving and actually the um, early or the second week of December. So those will be two exciting ones. The last one's going to be exciting. There you go, 78. The last track will be exciting. It's Nico Circuit. A lot of you have seen it probably on the internet or through a YouTube channel, but not quite in the pro series so you'll definitely it'll be definitely a cool track to see here we are next up is going to be number 808 manabu manabu fujinaka in his tcp magic awa tire good ride rx7 fd3s three rotor three rotor mean machine this is the one you always hear in all the other tracks. They've been saying, yeah, that's a rotary in the background. It's always going to so We'll see how he's going to come around screaming around outer zone one to that inside clip. You hear him already. I don't even see him. There he is. Coming around to outer zone one. Oh, not quite all the way to outer zone one. Real safe on that transition. I'm not sure what happened from outer zone one to that inside clip. He definitely didn't have a hard flick. It didn't carry a lot of angle through that zone to outer yeah, zone one. Yeah, very, very safe. Um, not much angle. Just kind of put together a run kind of run. Wasn't expecting that for sure. No. And uh, he did miss a large portion of outside zone one, like you see right here. Not too close there. Tries to fill outside zone two. Doesn't flick it. Is off throttle for a little while. Doesn't throw too much angle through uh, the inside clip either. So I would have to say, I mean, it's a score, but yeah. it's just it's it's going to be just a score. So yeah, I was saying as I was saying earlier about the track. So this is a 2.8 mile track. So tomorrow during top 32 and top 16, you're going to see them do a turnaround towards the end, uh, a little bit a ways from the finish line they're going to turn around and come back around because with the rest of the track around that's two miles back around trying to do a switch rolls we'd be here all day yeah that'll be kind of tiring to watch <laughs> boring yeah so um 
I mean, we're watching qualifier right now, but these drivers need to definitely kind of pick up the pace because it's kind of repetitive, you're, you know. You're sounding I'm, tired. I'm kind of starting to hey, get you a know little what? depressed. You know what? How many candy corn fans? Oh, there you go, 75. How many candy corn fans do I have? Because I gave some to Robbie yesterday. He was like a little kid. <laughs> I ate a whole and bag. And then he reminded me of my son just bouncing off the walls. I was just like, I need to bring this as my ammunition when he's got this nice monotone voice on the mic. But here we are. This is actually an exciting driver, which yes. should wake Robbie up. Is going to be number 57, Kanta Yanaguida, in his Team Orange Junior, JZX100 Chaser. All right, let's pick up the pace, guys. Let's this go. This kid knows how to drive, so let's see how he's going to come out here. Look at that. Already initiated around the turn, not even at the three cone yet. Carry it all the way through the three, two, one, up here into the outer zone one. Beautiful job in outer zone one right there. Nice. Nice, nice job. Through and on throttle, look at that. and boom. Look at that. Carrying it all the way through with all that smoke dragging behind him. That is a guy to watch out for. Man, that was a, a very good run. Very exciting run. Um, out of all these runs, I would have to say it's probably most exciting to me. Um, but he does uh, fill the zones. He fills the zones, and also I like the way he runs a lot of angle from outside zone one and takes it all the way, not as hard as a flick, but no mistakes going from outside zone two through inside clip one and out to outside zone three. Very beautiful job by uh, Yana Guida. He's been doing that all day for practice sessions too, so I mean, needless to say, I, I I always expect the best out of him. I mean, ever since he started out, I know he started out rough at Abisu. He was in his S14, but they uh, beefed him up, stuck him in this 2J heavily powered chaser, and he's definitely performed, showing up at Sugo in podium and then coming out at uh, Okayama and performing too. We had some uh, candy corn haters. I'm sorry. There you go. Ooh, Whoa, look at that. 93 are points lead. Hey, that's early to say for points lead, but man, 93 has been pretty solid the last few rounds for being a. Uh, I mean, look at it. it. That was a good run. I mean, it was. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys uh, watching this is probably going to agree too. But let's see if he's going to keep look it at going. That. I don't know. The fans are ready for the next driver. Look at that. They're ready to go right there, Brazil. So we got Go Brazil, Yukio Fausto is next, car number 555 driving the Side X Japan with sideways experience, S15 with the 2JZ. Now let's see if he's going to carry the 90 point and above uh, score that Yana Guida just punched out. Here he is coming through the chicane. He definitely talked to me before we started this and said, yo, hands down to my sponsors. They love them. They showed support. They're giving their fans some support, bringing them out here. So here he is coming to this outer zone one. Look at that flare he's bringing. Look at this kick. Boom, Whoa. the hard angle we always expect coming uh, to that inside clip. Uh, Had a little correction. Here he is carrying it out to outer zone three and finishing off with nothing but throttle. But man, that hard angle. I just I just want to see him finish it off. See, he didn't complete it the way he wanted to, but he went for that challenge. And I, I, I respect that. that. Yeah. yeah, I respect that because he tried to do something. He didn't want to just come out and show you guys something safe. He said, you know what? Let me go ahead and try to throw the car as much as possible. Now, it didn't go the way he wanted to. Uh, he didn't make it all the way out to the outside zone one as probably well as he thought. Though. Right there, look at that angle. A little bit too much but he had to throttle it back a little bit. Um, there's a lot of wavering um, going from outside zone two uh, to the three area where the inclip is. So I wouldn't have there's to say that that was, yeah. I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't say that that would be, um, that's not there you the go, run the that he yeah, wanted he, to do, but he was going for it. But yeah, you know, you, it just shows right there that he's out here for his fans too, trying to throw that flare. Cause look at them representing Jumping up and down, making the noise, making us have some life in our voice. Hey, and, um, you know, we're probably going to get jumped after this if I don't <laughs> give a good score. But I'm not going to say that that's probably not going to be one of the best scores. There, there you, you go, go yeah, um, Lontane isn't here, so he doesn't have to worry about getting jumped by him because he's a line scorer. But no, like seriously, his inside clip, he wasn't as close as he was supposed to be. He did miss outside zone one, so he should be able to clean. Look at that. They're still happy. The fans are still happy, and they still uh, support him. So um, really looking forward to how he's going to do for the second run. Exactly. And the fans out there online, too, what we see, we see the Brazilian flags getting thrown up in the chat. And I know he 100% appreciates it, and he goes back and watches every one of these comments. So thank you all out there, and he's definitely got a bigger shoe to fill for this next run for him. But next up, coming up, is going to be number 33, Junior Ishikawa, 
in his uh, Hiroshima Toyota Team Droopy CNX 86. Yeah, so this is how Chiroku made it up to the podium in uh, ABC Circuit. Yeah, I totally said CNX. CNX, it's okay. Here we go, coming up. Beautiful job. Let's see this split coming to nice. two. Not Ooh. bad at all. Coming to inside clip. Man, I must say, man, Kerry that was through. a really good Ooh. run right here by Ishikawa. Very clean. I really liked. There could have been a little bit more flick, but that was. But coming that was through good that outer right zone there. one, it just looked like he was on ice, just carrying it through. So smooth. That was like, I mean, he's like butter, man, right there. He's just like that ninja that was on that uh, Motis commercial that we just saw oh, the slipping new one? on the yeah. oil. Yeah. Here he is coming around right here. Look at that beautiful job. Look at how, look at, okay, so I, I hope you guys realize what I'm seeing too, and I know because you guys are pretty much, you know, scoring better than we are, you know, but then that was really smooth. I'm, um, I'm guessing that's got to be um, one of the higher I want to say this scores. though, going back to rounds one and two, like Ebisu and, and and, and back to how he was driving, he had a lot of hesitation, a lot of jerking of the car. And it's like, it's good to see this at round six, the last round. Finally, he has that fluidity. He has that commitment. He has all that, what he's what he's building up to be. So it's pretty awesome to see that transition from early on this year till now. So we'll see what the score is from the judges. Yeah, this is our, our nut. he's currently in 10th place, so definitely trying to fill the role to get higher up in the points. There you go, 93. Ooh, Ooh look at that. That's a tie with the uh, Yanaguida, so they're tied at, oh, but you know what? Um, they're going to have to go with the second best, too, so let's see if one of them is going to get higher than a 93. Yep. So here we are. Next up, coming up, is going to be number 56, Naoto Suenaga, in his Team Kazuma with Power Vehicle S15. If you remember last event at Okayama, he actually suffered really bad front-end damage during practice session for Top 32 and was unable to fulfill his run due to the damage that he sustained. He ran straight into the wall. So let's see how he's going to perform here with some of the same dynamics as Okayama. probably felt that mistake but here he is finishing off getting a run in the books but missing that outer zone two for sure yeah definitely uh, missing outside zone two and also not throwing that angle that he's supposed to um, at the transition and at you know during outside zone two so and basically it looks like he's going straight into inside clip like watch this outside zone one doesn't feel it too much and right here then he leaves and it looks like the car is almost going straight towards the inside clip. Um, and it doesn't look like he has, you know, he's throwing a crazy amount of angle going through there yeah. either. So, I mean, once again, you know, this is one of the cars that looks like he's just trying to rush through the track. I'll give him this, though, throughout the season. I mean, he's, he's had some struggles. He had turbo issues, had to tap out once, had another turbo issue where the line came off and caught fire, and then crashing. So let's see if he could collect himself for this last round. Try to get a second run better. I mean, I know he, he got a run in the books. That's good. But we'll see. I know he has a lot more to show because, I mean, he podiumed not too long ago. Yeah, he did. So um, he should be used to these fast tracks. Maybe he's just trying to, you know, drive safe for the first run and get a score in there. So. There you go, 83, which is not a bad score. Pretty safe and pretty in the middle. Yeah, but uh, his line score was high, too. So some of these drivers are probably looking for the um, uh, trying to tackle the line yeah. uh, score. It looks like he lifts the, 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 the points deduction he had for the line is probably around outside zone, too, because he left the uh, outside zone, too, a little bit early, too. So, But he was close to inside clip one, and it uh, looks like he filled the other outside zones very well. It's going to be Tarahito Fukada with Tanaba SSR Team Dunlop with Well, as Wise Motorsports, Big Wheels 1-2, and it's out of zone one right now. Ooh, nice. nice. Definitely different from him throwing that kind of flick right there in out of zone one and filling out of zone two beautifully in that inside clip. And look at that, dragging it all the way out to outer zone three, which is unlike 
this is unlike him because usually he does these nice, safe, subtle runs. But see that hard flick in the outer zone one? It's like he's like, hey, it's the end of the year. Let me see what I, what I can show these yeah, fans. Yeah, exactly. This is like the exciting side of Fukada coming out um, because he is, like you said, very like a gentleman-like driver. Um, but right here, it looks like uh, he does try to use the full momentum of the car, um, throws a lot of angle there, and helps him um, make a little bit harder of a flick uh, than what he would probably usually do outside zone two. Uh, so definitely, um, this is like the new Fukada. He's given us a little intro for next year's uh, how he's going to perform. But yeah, he's also, like I said, you know, with car issues, he's suffered turbo, you know, turbo issues. So I think he's been through like two or three so far this season. And like, like um, the way he was right now, he didn't have the craziest flick, but definitely was very smooth mm -hmm. um, on top of being a little bit more exciting than how he usually is. So um, really depends on what he also gets for the angle in line scores. So is we'll everybody see. watching or they're looking at their phone? <laughs> they're watching the live stream. That's okay, what I'm thinking on. Okay. That's what it is. Probably not the English live stream, but, you know, we'll say they are. Yeah, so, guys, once again, thank you for watching. Um, and Especially wherever time the crazy is, times because you know. daylight savings kicked in, in in the States. And then oh, I was wow. looking at the time slots, and I'm like, man, for the East Coast to stay up, that's insane. For, for London to stay up or the U.K. to stay up, it's insane. So appreciate you all out there. If you are viewing with us in those areas, thank you very much. We do appreciate it. I know you could come back and watch us later, but to watch us live, it's awesome because you can catch our mistakes right now. And you could re-watch it later, too, and make fun <laughs> of us. That's cool. Just don't make a meme. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Don't make a meme of me. Make a meme of um, oh, Kenny thanks, right thanks. here. Yeah, I'll be expendable for you. <laughs> make sure he's on crutches. And <laughs> I'm trying to give him details. <laughs> so crutches and bright shoes. One. There you go. Yeah, that's bright it. shoes with a cr uh, crutches there. I'm still waiting for this score. The anticipation that these judges are building up. I would say. Oh, I already put my score. I know. In. I was gonna say, Rob, you're over your jaw jack, and maybe it's your you're, you're <laughs> the one that's holding us up. The first. I'm sorry. I'm gonna um, admit though. The first score that we had um, today, I forgot to type it into. I wrote it down, and I was talking, and I forgot to put it, it in like the database. amateur hour right there. Yeah. I. I, I mean, it was the first first uh, judge run that we had today. So, excuse me, but I haven't uh, made a mistake after that. So. It's good. What's everybody guessing right now for scores? Well, they're just telling us their location. Jamaica. Oh, okay. Nice. U.S. Nice. Nashville, Tennessee. What's that one? Dude, you know what? I I'm mean, bad thank with you. flags. Th I know. I'm thank you for the flags, but we're, we didn't even go to high school. <laughs> 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 we didn't even go to junior high school. No, we're not. I'm not. I'm not flag smart. I know the Brazilian one. That's UK. UK. See, they even gave you the heads up. Thank you. You're like, you dummies. <laughs> <laughs> North Carolina. Duh, yeah. We had Texas earlier, Ireland. There's another replay. As we're talking, you can see the replay, too. Giving some appreciation for the fans. Looks like we got some scores in the books from the fans, so we'll Man, see. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing high some high 80s. scores. Yeah, high 80s, uh, low 90s. Canada's easy to know. Yeah, that's right. I, I know Canada because Lontane is from Canada. And yep. He has a Canadian flag on his bag. There you go, 90. 90. See, there you go, 90 points. Good job by Fukada. Very smooth run and a new version of him. Exactly. Uh, very exciting nice to see flare. him the way he is. But, yeah, man, definitely from all over the country in the U.S. and all over the world. Look at this. While he's talking about that, let's push Yoshiko. on to 125, which is Yoshichika Tamagawa. A lot of people's favorite car, JZ80 Supra or, you know, I don't know. How it's like it's an iconic. Like this is one of the most iconic cars that they have in Japan. Following like, the, I mean, the price board on these cars are just nuts. I was just looking. Here he is with his was it free JZ80 that he got. Here he is coming into outer zone two. Not quite all the way in outer zone two, but not bad of a job. Had nice fluidity transitioning from outer zone one to two, and then finishing off to outer zone three. The good old Supra, there you go. Yeah, Insane so livery. He does have a good amount of angle going to out, outside zone one. Let me go ahead and uh, double check to make sure. And also doesn't make huge amounts of mistakes. 
Just right there, though, uh, the transition that he makes from outside zone one to two, it doesn't look as smooth as it should be. It looks like he pauses for a split second um, to make it to outside zone two. See how these scores come out. Yeah, but that car and the driver combined, it looks like he's always a weapon. He, he looks like he's really, really fast all the time. So, there you go, 82. Um, so yeah, if you plan on coming out tomorrow, you can come check out the vendors. They got a nice ca uh, cafe area that has a beautiful view of Outer Zone 2 and the inside clip. But next up is going to be number 61, Kazuki Hayashi in his Good Ride Works S15. Yeah, so he's been he's been catching my eye uh, all season long because he's laying down some pretty impressive runs. Um, and today during practice, uh, same thing. He was doing some crazy uh, runs. So let's go ahead and check this out. Here comes Hayashi. Look at that. Outer's on one. I see this transition back. Could be a little bit deeper in outer zone two, but not too bad. Losing a little bit out, coming from inside clip to outer zone three, but able to make it to outer zone three. And like you said, he's definitely climbing in the ranks. I mean, he's currently sitting, I believe, in sixth place, um, climbing in the ranks to get up there to podium. Yeah, so right now, um, just like some of the other drivers that I was seeing uh, today, it looks like he's kind of rushing through the track. And uh, there wasn't a whole crazy amount of flick. Not a crazy amount of angle going from outside zone one to two. Very smooth, but it looks like he washes out a little bit and he had to be a little hesitant to get back on gas or the positioning the car to go to outside zone three. He looked like he was struggling going from outside zone two to three. Um, so I'm not going to say that was the best run that he could have done and what I've seen um, him do during practice either. But there's a score there on the board. So, there I mean, there's only one incomplete that we had uh today and that looked like um that was almost a, a complete run but there was an incomplete which barely straightened out at outside zone three but let's see what hayashi can do for his second run next up at the line is going to be number 770 yusuke kusaba in his team Cusco racing a90 supra yeah this so this car past weekend we saw him um testing his new car that yeah. was a gr supra uh, gr86 GR so he's <laughs> probably just decided to bring this car back because he's already driving it. So we'll see the new car debut next year, but let's see how he's going to finish off this season with this car. Here he is coming into outer zone one. There he is. Nice job into outer zone one. Nice fluidity nice. coming into outer zone two, the inside clip. And what a strong finish coming through outer zone three. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so I talked to him, you know, last week about it. He says the comfort that he has with this Supra is immensely different from it was last year. So he says he, he thoroughly enjoys driving this car, but he's actually really excited for the Cusco one, Cusco uh, GR86, because it's lighter and it's faster. Yeah, he faster, said like 200 kilograms or something. So that's like three, or that's like 400 pounds, four or Yeah, and he said pounds, it's like yeah. a 3.6, yeah. I think. Yeah. So he does miss inside clip one, but definitely something, um, a uh, very clean run, and I like the way he went from a high rate of angle to the other. Not as hard as a flick that I wanted to see, but um, very similar to what Fukada just did. Yeah. Um, because pretty much for me. There you go, 89. Um, yeah. Pretty see, close so, to what yeah. Fukada got, yeah. So, I mean, pretty much I, I matched the score on the style side of it with Fukada um, because of uh, the, the way they moved the car. It was very, um, you know, very smooth and nice. So. But the thing is that I wanted to add in there is it's crazy because – Last event, if you watched or if you tuned in or you could tune in later on it at Okayama, his team sacrificed their FDJ2 car to do an engine swap to drop it in his car to make sure he's ready to go for his yeah, so it's competition. The team, you know, the team, the teamwork makes the dream work. You're right on that. But, um... Um, that's why um, he's sitting fifth right now in the series because they did make a lot of sacrifices. But now... Uh, let's move on to car number 36, Kazumi Takahashi driving the TMS Racing Team Silent Tire E92 BMW. This car uh, is back. The team and the driver decided to move to a JZX chassis for one of the rounds, and they're just right back into this BMW. I think this car is well balanced, and I think it's a very great car. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy ones uh, during practice.
practice. I'm looking forward to this. Been doing a phenomenal job in this car, so it was pretty insane to see halfway through the season him get transitioned into a JZX 100. But here he is. Nice, aggressive flip right there into outer zone, or inside clip one to outer zone three. Not a bad run at all, but what's crazy is in 2019, he was out here with the JZX 100 competing. So cool that he's uh, back in his uh, E92, powered by one GR twin turbo, insane power plant. And the car alone just looks very beautiful. So let's see this replay coming into this 3-2-1. Yeah, so it doesn't look like he feels outside zone one as well, but um, that was a very exciting run by Takashi right here. He flicks the car. 90 degree turn, a little bit of a wavering there, but uh, very clean, um, exciting run by Takahashi. Man, uh, that's his first run, so I wonder what he has in his back pocket for the second run. I'm uh, excited to see. We'll see right here the scores. Looks like we got a lot of people in the low there 90s. You go, there you yeah, go, no, 90s. 90s. Yep. There you go. So just imagine if he could have filled the outside zone one um, and did a little bit of a harder flick uh, going to outside zone two because I know he was a little bit closer to the outside zone two because he was a little short on the outside zone one. So he probably couldn't do as hard of a flick because he would have went off, uh, off track on the outside zone too, so. So here we are coming up to our last three drivers. Our number three uh, position holder is gonna be number 90, Shinji Minoa in his Heyman TM Labo Cylone tires, JZX90, which is crazy because this is the exact car he competed in two years ago here. Right here, right? And here. Uh, we and forgot to mention that Takahashi, Minoa, and the next car up and the next driver up, Hibino, are all gunning for the second place spot yeah. because we already have the champion of, um, for the season. Uh, yeah, for the season for Monster, so. Yeah, Takahashi sitting at 230 and Shinji Minoa sitting at 277. So definitely he's gonna have to pick it up here. Podium, what's crazy though is in 2019, Shinji Minoa actually podium third. Hey, look at that, not bad coming in. Very, so it's smooth, like yeah. very smooth coming into that outer zone three. Just throttle all the way to the finish. But yeah, like I was saying, he actually podium third place in 2019. So we'll see what he's gonna do and see if he can hold that you know, podium position. All right, so very smooth run. I'm gonna have to say that that was very similar to like how um, Fukada did and, uh, I'm sorry, Kusaba did too right there, but nice flick right there. Kind of misses inside clip one or the inside clip right there. So we'll see. Sitting at 277. Next up is going to be Hibino, which is at 299. So that very that you know 22 point variation is definitely going to be impactful whenever it comes to getting these podium positions. See if Shinji Minoa can bump himself up to second. Yeah, I would have um, as a style judge. I would have to say that was very similar to uh, Fukada's run and also uh, Kasaba's run. Oh, there 89 right there. So I'm not going to say that there was a crazy amount of flair, but very smooth. Um, and it looked like it's coming from a very seasoned, uh, experienced driver. And he was just kind of like, you know what, this is what I have to do, right? So definitely going to be an exciting second run because I know all these drivers are going to probably step it up. But look at this. That's the Liberty Walk team and the our other massive their supporters. Fan base exactly, here, yeah. yeah. So it's either Liber Team Liberty Walk versus Team Brazil. <laughs> True. <laughs> With the fans out here. But here we go. This is car number four, Tetsuya Hibino. Currently ranking second in the um, championship. He's only like 20 points ahead. I 22 think, from points Minoa. ahead, yeah, from Minoa. Yeah, with the LB Racing, S15, four rotor, twin turbo, Sylvia. Now this guy always does exciting runs. So His first run's yeah. always out, off the wall. So here he is, look at that, already initiated into the three, two, one, and carrying all the way through. Look at that, coming into the outer zone. Beautiful job in outer zones. Coming in outer zone two to the inside clip one. Oh, oh, but washing out right there. The car died. Oh, so this happened earlier during practice, practice when he was coming yeah. into outer zone one, his car just died. It, it, uh, we weren't sure what the mechanical issue came up to, but. Yeah, it started now, yeah, it looked like it died. 
Not sure if it's the same issue he had during practice, but look at that entry into outer zone one. Could have been a little deeper in outer zone one, but look at that hard flick getting that 90 degree angle to that inside clip. Man, he's sitting on an incomplete now. It's a so. lot of pressure, but that's pressure that he's used to. I mean, last time he stole the show and took first place in uh, in qualifying, so that's nothing you know new to him. But he definitely wants to get that car dialed in and get that you know the me me mechanics down. But there you go. The <laughs> <laughs> There's Mr. Cato from Liberty Walk. That is his way to show. <laughs> that's the way for him to show is a no good, no good run. He's saying, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure that they're going to come back strong for the second run. So, yeah, our last car coming up, getting ready to come up to the gate, is going to be number eight, Koichi Yamashita. He's our champ. Yep. He's sitting at 421 points, way ahead of the rest of the pack. But what's crazy and what I, you know, realized is in 2019, he won first here. He podium first here at Fuji. So he's very familiar with this track. He really is. I was just trying to, I yeah, was just trying to think, but then two, but wait, wait, wait. Two years ago, we, our champion was Mad Mike with it, right? Yeah, then last year was Yamasta, and this year is Yamasta. Let's see what he's gonna do. There you go, look at that smoke show he's throwing now. Coming to outer zone two, real The commitment though right there, all the way around to outer zone three. And just out here to have a good time at this point. All right, so I would have to say he knows what to do and it's a very exciting run to see, but at the same time, I'm not gonna say that it's the most exciting and it's not, this, oh, yeah. it doesn't have the crazy flair of you know flicking and stuff like that. So he pr pretty much puts the car where it needs to be. He's on throttle. Um, all the time and most of the time on the track. Had a little bit po of a pause outside zone two, but, oh, 2019, I'm sorry, 2019 was Andy. And then before that was, it's all. Man, I, I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. I'm, I'm kind of dumb. <laughs> hey, yeah, sorry it. about that, but thank you for the correction. Um, That's why y'all are there. See, I appreciate it. And 2020 was Yamasa. Yeah, you guys got our back. Thank you very much. Um, there you go, 90 for Yamasta. There you go, 90 points for Yamasta. Um, I would have to say that was very similar to what uh, Minoa did, Fukada did, and uh, Kusaba did too. I'll give him this. I don't think he had much practice either. Yeah, I don't yeah. think – I didn't see him out there as yeah. much. Yeah. So, yeah uh, – that's the end of the first run of qualifying for all these drivers. We're going to come back here soon to the second round of qualifying. So check yes. out these commercials. We'll be right back. ベリアスイコータ道でもちゃんと曲がる、ちゃんと止まる、高い安全性能を発揮。アイスカートセブンにしよう。セブンセブンセブンやる。横浜やる。革新のカーボンベゼル。What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Tentou to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshiku. 
チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。おぐろレーシングクラッチ。O R C Brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Bounty. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. Tenton to Kakushin. Ogura Clutch の technology を凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC.
Welcome back everybody to Fuji International Speedway. Look at that beautiful view of Fuji right there. Here for the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan 2021 series, last round of the series this year. We just got finished with the first runs of qualifying, about to start our second run of qualifying. Hey, we do still have two FDJ2 rounds. Yes, um, yes. The next one's gonna be in Suzuka, right on the Thanksgiving weekend, and we're gonna have another one at Nico in December. So make sure you tune in um, to that. But um, right now we are on, like you said, this is the last round for the Formula Drift Japan series. Right there, that's a very, very uh, unfamiliar car you see. Uh, but this car was driving in the series about two years ago, I believe. Now it's being driven by Kazuto Furusho. The shop uh, built the car span with a uh, shake off. It's the Audi. This is actually an A5, I think. It's a big uh, two door coupe packed with the V8 uh, LSX motor from the US. And this is, they got the car. Um, together where he's able to drive his second qualified run. This is the first time he's driving this track in this car uh, here today. So let's see how uh, he is doing. Let's hear this V8 roar uh, when he's driving through the track. There he is. Oh! And not what we wanted to see for his run, but that, like you said, he didn't come out for his first qualified run. That's obviously gonna be an incomplete. That is an insane car. I know you got to kind of experience a little bit about that car. It's like an interesting build behind it. Oh yeah, it was uh, when it was running. It was like uh, it was amazing. It was loud. It was a lot of torque. Um, What's insane is that front grill right there is actually the intake. Yeah. So that whole thing is they 3D made printed, this. Right? Yeah, it's like a crazy. Um, um, just go and check one of the videos. That yeah. I made but, yeah. Robbie made a video. Go check out his YouTube. Uh, hey man, Robbie. Thank check you. Check it out. Yes, thank you. And then uh, he'll show you the build and everything like that. Insane car. I mean, even the headers all the way back, they had to like tubular, the tubular manifold had to go forward and then roll yeah, all back, the way back. Like right next to where the, the radiator think, and everything. Right, right under the lower arms or I don't know, something crazy, but. Yeah, they had to do that because they couldn't fit the man the manifold down, straight down through the side. So yeah, but too bad for them. Um, I know they had issues with the car. That's why they couldn't run the first um, um, lap for their qualify. But then the second one didn't look like it. So they're they're knocked out here. But um, yeah, looking forward to seeing that car in the near future. So up next at the line right now is number 91 going through the chicane. Tsukasa Miyagi and his Gekidon Vinoki. S14. Well, S15, he said last time. Got a 72 on his first qualifying run. There he is coming through. Outer zone one was pretty beautiful. Real early to outer zone two. Was not able to make it to outer zone two. Rolling around to outer zone three here and definitely didn't make it all the way to outer zone three. Can it be enough for him to get higher than a 72? Because 72, I don't think, is quite in that safe zone just yet. Yeah, but I would have to say that um, there was a lot of things that he did make mistakes here on the track right here. Uh, it looks like he was a little early on outside zone two, too, so he had to actually extend the car so it'll make it around the inside clip one. Uh, so that's not the type of driving we want to see. So there's less, he's lacking in commitment in that area because basically he's on the brakes uh, trying to extend the 78, car. So a little bit more out of a, out of that 72 point score. So we'll see if that's going to be enough for him to qualify for top 32. Man, but I think you're in the danger zone if you're in the 70s for sure because I know that there's, I know, 10 plus uh, drivers that are going to be going home um, early. And obviously you want to stay in for the main event, which is going to be tomorrow. We have the top 32 from the morning uh, all the way down to the winning uh, event here. Right there, number 219, Hidehiko Sugita and his worker with 5X. C33 Laurel coming into outer zone one right here. Beautiful job into outer zone one. See how this transition Ooh, is going nice. to take him into this inside clip here to outer zone three, carrying it all the way out. Got a 75 on his first qualify run definitely looked a lot better than his first run so I'm expecting oh, yeah, higher sure. points for him for sure that was very nice it was very smooth I would have to say it wasn't as good um, of, a, of, of a flare uh, compared to 
some of the higher scores that we had um, for the first runs, but definitely very um, clean. Look at this. It's like hard. It's very smooth. He could have got on uh, throttle a little bit earlier, but very smooth and doesn't look like he makes any major mistakes throughout the track. Very fluid. Uh, I really like that. I mean, uh, that was a very clean run by uh, 88. Zuchita. There Huge you go, improvement yep. from 75 to 88 in his RB26 powered C33 Larell. I've always liked those. I like that boxy aggressive look. Yeah, it was a very clean run. Like I said, you know, it's very simple. It's very easy to see when you see a good run and a bad run. I'm not gonna say bad run, but an average run and something that's above average. You know, it's like a that was a B plus. I'm waiting for the fans to catch what you just did. I just talked about the car, and you just talked about the run. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not listening to me, Robbie. Yeah, Lorel's cool. Lorel's okay. Lorel's cool. Now let's go ahead. <laughs> Move on, this is uh, Toshiharu Kazama driving his JZX100. With Team Kazama with power vehicles. Here he is coming in, he got a 84 on his initial qualifying run. Look at that, beautiful job, look at that aggressiveness coming in outer zone one. Had a little bit of hesitation, but look at that, bringing some flair this time in his second run. Coming into outer zone three, and oh! Bailing out there in outer zone three. Washing out and taking the pylon with them. Did he take both of them? Yeah, he did. But let's talk about the C33 Laurel real quick. <laughs> All right, so yeah, because I'm going to got an 84, so he's sitting, he's in the 80s, so that might be uh, good enough. I'm not sure, depending on what everybody does on the second run. Uh, but right here, it looks like he kind of loses um, front traction and the rear over rotates right before outside zone three. I don't know what happened right there inside the car, but um, he does get an incomplete for his second run. But like we just said, he got an 84 for his first run. So that might be safe, especially with these other incompletes yeah. that are happening. So we'll see. All right, so speaking of uh, the Laurel earlier, and as we see the Supra right now on the screen, I really like the diversity and the different kinds of cars that they do have in Japan. Yeah, we don't have a lot of the American cars. Uh, we don't have any. We don't have any Corvettes on this uh, in FD Japan. We don't have any Mustangs in yeah. FD Japan. And our what first V8. We don't have a Viper here, like what Dean Carney drives in the States. But um, you know, most of the engines here are 2Js. But we do have, you know, the R31. We got the Laurel, and we have. Uh, I'm not sure if we have one today, but we usually have Skylines. Before, we used to have like an R34 coupe. Um, in FDJ2, FDJ2, we, have, two we, yeah, do, we yeah. have an R33 coupe. And we have R34 sedan in FDJ2. And the, the yeah, we got a Crown, yeah, so yeah. The variations that we have from FDJ2 to, to the pro FDJs, it's cool to see, like you said, maybe engine vari 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 uh, variants would be pretty cool because, I mean, we, we're now just seeing our first V8 this season. Well, actually, mm -hmm. the last two seasons, last year and this year. Yeah. So, you know, it's cool to see different flair, but, you know, the, it's it's the powerhouses they're trying to build. This is what they're used to, but it's a matter of time whenever everything's going to start collaborating with other other models and stuff. So here we are right now, ready to go. We got a 76 on his initial one, is a Shinichi Saito in his Car Guy Racing A90 Supra. So this is new this year to him, halfway through the season he debuted it, had the 2J under the hood. A little short on outside zone one. Struggled, yeah, struggled on his first run. So struggled a little bit in outer zone one and two, be able to get to inside clip there, but definitely had to do a re like a little hesitation flick into outer zone three there. I wouldn't say, I guess, a reinitiation. That's a little harsh, but. Yeah, not a reinitiation, but I would still have to say not a clean run uh, by Saito. It looks a little sloppy. He looks like he's wavering a little bit uh, throughout, like even after here, outside zone two, there you go, a little bit of waver there. And it doesn't look like he can, there you go, adds angle there outside zone three. So it doesn't look like he can keep the car as stable as he wants it to be. So maybe he's still trying to work out the kinks that he has from the new car. 75 points. Um, his 76 is his higher score, uh, which he had on the earlier run. So let's hope that that is good enough for him to be, um, for him to squeeze himself through into the top 32. Next up at the line is going to be number 37, Katsuhiro Meguro in his, I don't know if it's Isin or ISSIN. Good ride. Isin. Kyushu. Maybe. 
in his Ison JZX100 Mark II. The, the Ison. Ison on top. He's trying to get the Ison on top. He got a 70, so he definitely needs to uh, get a little bit more to get a that A lot of Ison. Yeah. He needs, you need to start Ison. But look at that. Here he is coming into that. The bend before, 3 two, one already initiated, coming up to the three cone. Here he is ripping around to outer zone one. Not too bad into outer zone one. Had that right edge into it, but real early into outer zone two, not able to fill it all the way to the end. And here he is coming up to outer zone three. Woo. Definitely showed commitment toward the end right there. So we'll see here, got a 70 on his first qualified run. Here you go, a replay coming up. There he is. Not quite all the way into outer zone one right there. And then outer zone two real early, leaving it real early there. And then coming into outer zone three here. Little hard to see, but able to fully commit into outer zone three. Definitely a lot better than his 70 point score before, or 70 point run that he had prior. Yeah, I, I liked his commitment. Um, definitely a lot better than what he did earlier. But at the same time, um, I'm not sure that wasn't probably one of the best runs that we've seen um, today because, you know, it looked like his switchback was a little too early. He had to extend the car uh, to make it through outside zone two and stuff. But that's an 84 point run. Huge improvement um, yeah, from his Yeah, it's a lot 70. better than a 70, so let's see how far this is going to take him for this weekend. Um, and uh, looking forward to seeing him um, and all the other drivers that makes it into the top 32. Next driver up is going to be number 58, Kazuhito Kubo, in his vacancy with Weld. 180SX got a 72 on his first qualify run. Left a lot out there on the track. Let's see if he can actually fill these zones this time and get where his put his car where it needs to be. And here he is coming around the bend up to the 3-2-1. Late initiation in that 3-2-1 coming out of the one cone. Ooh. There you go, right there, right on that nice. line. Nice. Nice split coming back to the outer zone two. And look at that commitment to outer zone three throttling all the way to the finish. Huge improvement from his first qualified run with a 72. Oh yeah, that was a uh, very exciting to see right now. Let's go ahead and check out the replay. Yeah, that, I mean, that's like a different person driving the car from the first run that he just did. And maybe he just did go, he just did uh, the whole safe run, but right there, nice angle, the nice flick going to outside zone two. It looked like he, um, he, he looked like he went straight into the inside clip going to outside zone three, but definitely uh, wanted to see him uh, push a little bit more angle, but it looked like he was carrying a little bit more speed than that uh, through the inside clip. But I would have to say as a style score, um, very good, uh, good job by uh, Kubo. And this Ooh, is, 91. This is the Kubo that I kind of wanted to see where we were talking, where I was talking about earlier. I was telling Kenny. Uh, about uh, Kubo where he looked like he seemed he seemed like he kind of lost his flair these past couple rounds uh, Because I remember he was one of the drivers one of the drivers to see and the one to see uh, During the series, but it looks like he's got his flair back. So a very good job Speaking of one that I want to see I want to see this one hit podium number 31 Koidice Sobagi Sobagiri and his team Shibata Cylon tires R31 Skyline yeah, if I'm not wrong, I heard that they're going to retire this car after this round. I'm going to confirm. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's see where they can take this 30-year-old uh, plus car right here. Very exciting driver. Coming in outer zone one. Got Look at baby. that. Makes it out to the outside zone one. Boom, nice flick. Very good job right there. A little bit later to get back on throttle out uh, by the inside clip. A very clean. Very good job by Sobagiri. And was definitely in those zones. Got an 80 on his first qualify run. I think that's better than an 80 right oh, here. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. My, that's my guess. But uh, I would have to say a uh, very clean, smooth run by Sobagiri. Very, uh, something similar to what we've seen for, uh, from some of the drivers that we saw uh, towards the end of the first runs that they did for the qualify. So we'll see here. Yeah, we have scores like, you Soba know, low 90s right here. And yeah, Sobagidi was out here in 2019 competing, so yeah, definitely had different livery. Yeah. But we'll see what the judges have for him. Exactly, store. that was a nice old skyline. 
They need to go ahead and turn the camera about, you know, a little bit more to the left. So we can see Mount Fuji. It'd be a perfect Because that, that, that forest on the right, I don't really care for. Yeah. Yeah, so let's see what Sobagiri gets in his R31 Skyline. We're seeing scores. There you there go. There you go, 92. Ooh. That's what I like to see. Good job by Sobagiri. Now I think he is probably the third highest point. Because I think 93 is 93 the highest rate we highest, have yeah. right now, right? 93, and then, yeah, he's the third one. Man, yeah. I'm smelling some um, high scores coming up for these second runs because it looks like everybody's catching on to see uh, they're, they're figuring out what they have to do to show us. And here next up is number 41, Shinichi Uemura, and his team, Hirano Tire, Uemura, Sagyo, IAS, JZX100 Chaser, got an 84 on his first qualify run. But... We'll see what he's going to do here coming through the chicane right now. Rolling up. Now we're getting some a lot of 90s. Low 80s might even be kind of dangerous. To yeah, me. early in the pack getting 90s, that's, that's putting a lot of pressure on the rest of the guys. Here it is right here. There you go. Look at that. Nice job. Just dipped a tire there. Very smooth. Right there on that full zone. Man, Whoa. I'm not going to lie. That's beautiful job right there getting to all the zones, getting the right angles, and I, I like that run right there. That's that was good. That's that's been three solid runs right there. Yeah, that was. Uh, I would have to say that's going to up the score too. So we're starting to look at some um, beautiful driving right here. I'm not going to say there's a crazy flare, but it's very smooth. Oh yeah. Look at this. There's the like hardly of it? no. Yeah. yeah. There's no. Oh. Yeah. So. He almost lost it he at carried, the end. He carried it all the way through. That's yeah, the thing. He, he, that was a that was very impressive because he wanted to kept go. He wanted to keep going. Um, so, almost took himself out from a good run, but uh, that's a scored run because he did uh, finish through the finish line and did not spin. So there, y'all. This is the first drone footage we're seeing up top, and you could see we're outer zone two. There's outer zone three. We only see straight ahead, so we don't even see them coming up that hill right there. Ooh. Yeah. Look at that, riding it all the way to the finish. Ninety-two. Ninety-two points. Congratulations. We got, we got a tie for first and a tie for third. Wow, Uemura's really been on it because um, it looked like he was barely qualifying at the beginning of the season, but I think starting last event. He's been kind of, uh, there's some kind of flare or something went off under him actually, where he's actually uh, making it in. Actually, I'm wrong. Uemura would be third at this point because he got an 84 on his first, first, first run, right? Run, yeah. yeah. So we have to go for the second best um, score. So let's see if we can keep popping up these 90 point scores. Next one up is going to be so driving the car guy racing 180SX with a 2JZ in it. His father already went, and now it's his turn to make his second run. And right there, it looks like an exciting run. Oh, he wanted to flick it hard, but just couldn't get all the way out to outer zone two and definitely struggling here toward the finish from inside cliff to outer zone three. So 84 is probably going to be his stronger end of the deal that he had for today's qualifying runs. I saw what he wanted to do there. It's just I think his approach to outer zone two was a little bit too aggressive for his, what is it, momentum that he was carrying through. Yeah, that could have been. I mean, num outside zone right one, here. outside Boom. zone one looked really good, but he had to be maybe another another car length more over to towards outside zone two. Then that would have been actually one of the uh, prettier runs that we had you yeah. know, all day today. So because yeah, he flicked a little too early and he just it dragged him toward that inside clip rather than outside to the outer zone two. Yeah, but good job for giving it that try. Uh, giving it that go by uh, the young driver, Shoya Saito. He's got the right mindset for that flick, though. But let's see what the score is going to come out to. Got an 84 on his initial qualifying run. A few of the spectators. It's a Friday, so there you go, 68. Boom. So yeah, it's a Friday here in Japan, so definitely uh, appreciate the spectators that came out here to 
check us out in person, but hands down to the ones all around the world that are staying up and sticking with us. If you're muting us, that's good too, but thanks for listening <laughs> in. We do appreciate it for sure. But here next up is uh, got an 81 on his first initial run is uh, number 283, Tsubasa Takizawa in his Zek Nova Japan and Superstar Channel JZX100 Mark II. And I've said it before multiple times, go check out his Superstar Channel YouTube channel. They do live coverage on what's going on in the back of the, in the pits area, interviews, stuff like that. So go check him out, give him some love. But here he is coming through that 3-2-1. Beautiful job coming up to outer zone one. There you go, makes it out to Not the outer zone Not bad at zone all. One. Oh, I was expecting more flick out of that. I thought he was gonna carry it through, but definitely played it a little safe there. Got an 81, like I said. Definitely was a better, better 81 score than that, or run. Yeah, there's um, some wavering here and there. Um, I'm not going to say that was like the super cleanest run and as smooth as some of the other drivers, um, but um, not too bad um, of a run right here. Right there, it's like a two-step angle right there. And right there, giving it a little bit more angle there too. But I would have to say... So we'll see here for Takizawa, see if, there you go. The Apple Man. <laughs> it's, oh, it, I guess this uh, character is called Arukuma, which is like, Aruku is walk and Kuma is bear. I don't know if they tied that up, but his name is Arukuma. So it's not a boy or a girl, it's just a character. That's an apple on his head, but it's, oh. 86. So it's an apple. But it's not, his head's not an apple, it's the, it, it's a mask or okay, something. Okay. So, but he's a bear. Wait, there's a mask on the mask. No, the that's not a no, mask. the bear's but, wearing a mask. No, no, oh, the mask. <laughs> you mean the, the, the mouth mask. Okay, 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 okay. I caught you off guard. Yeah, You're I was like, like, what are you talking about? Oh, I thought about? you were talking about the, the, no, the, the, the bear himself. No. That's a real bear. The green, he's, you, you never seen a green bear? No, look, there's gullible written up there, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but never... no, there's the backstory behind it. Let's get through this run, and we'll get a little bit more on the backstory we'll behind that bear. That Next up is number 330, Shige, Shigehisa Sasayama in his Team M2 Racing JZX100 Chaser. Sasayama sus sustained significant damage at Okayama, but was able to make it back out here, put his car back together, didn't sustain too much damage to his body, but yeah, he's the one that crashed into outer zone three in that wall. So it was a tragic uh, incident, but not sure if this is probably, this is definitely gonna be better than his first run of a 66, but wasn't quite in those outer zones that were in the zones period. No, as a style judge, it was a lot better than what he did in the first uh, run. But if I look at it overall, in my comments overall, you know, he does miss outside zone one and he's very shallow. He does kick out a good amount of angle after outside zone two, but he also misses inside clip uh, by a good amount. So I would have to say that there are a lot of points that will be deducted um, from the run that he just made. But I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if it's going to be as low as a 66, but I'm not going to say it's going to be in the 90s either. So. Yeah. Definitely better than a 66, like you said. Uh, it's probably, probably a 67. A, <laughs> no, I'm just I hope it's better than that. I mean, he did throw a little bit more flair that yeah. time. He missed a few of the zones, but he sacrificed what he can to give better, get more in style. But there you go, 77. So 11 point increase on his score. I can't give. I don't have the defined number for what the low score is or the low bottom. What is it? I think we're looking at 14. I think we're going to lose 14 13, from it. 13 drivers, I think. No, we gained back our... Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't even know how many drivers we have today. No, you were right. Uh, no, I don't mean... I, oh, yeah. I'm just listening to what you're saying. <laughs> you got it. Here we go. We got, we got jump Robbie. <laughs> Doesn't know what's going on. But here we go right here. Number 93, Monkey Ito in his Hirano tires. JGX owner Chaser coming up to outer zone one. Look at that Whoa. coming in. Beautiful job in outer zone one. Let's see how he's going to finish uh, it off. Wasn't quite too aggressive there. And let's see if he's going to throttle through outer zone three. And he definitely didn't get to outer zone three at all. So yeah. 74 was his initial run. And uh, this is a tough one to, to yeah, say. Yeah, because like I said, you know, if 
I'm just going off of the style side of it. There wasn't really any big bobbles and not really big mistakes made by uh, Ito, but at the same time, not a huge flick right here. And at the same time, he does miss a lot of outside there. Right there is a correction from outside zone two going into the inside clip. And he does uh, look like he's uh, wobbly on the angle throughout outside zone three as well. There you so go, 85. Oh, the angle. Wow, that's a huge, hmm. so 74 is what he got. Like I said. Everybody had about low, low 80s is what they were yeah. going for. Well, low to mid. So, yeah, you guys are right. I mean, hey, better than what I was guessing. 74 is what he got initially. 85 is what he's going to take for his top 32 qualification. So we'll see here for no next up is going to be number seven, Junji Yamamoto. This is why I'm not a judge because I was like, I don't know how much better he did. So I'll just stick to just. Oh, no, that's I, I mean, I thought that, too. But that's because we're looking at uh, or we're not dissecting. I'm not dissecting the the angle part or yeah, the yeah. line part of it either. I'm just looking at the style part of it. So, so let's see how Yamamoto's going to do in his RX-7, powered by a 2J coming up to the 3-2-1 here. Ripping around the corner, already initiated in that three cone. Look at that, coming into outer zone one. Nice little touch into that rumble strip, coming to outer zone two. Beautiful job, coming to that inside clip. Can he hold it all the way to outer zone three? Couldn't quite get all the way to out to outer zone three, but beautiful job on outer zone one, two in the inside clip. Got a 76 on his first qualify run. Yeah, I would have to say that that's probably a lot better of a run than his first run because it really it looked really smooth. I'm going to go ahead and double check on the replay right here, but looks like he has a good amount of angle going through outside zone one. A uh, very average way to do a transition, and he had to kind of wait to get back on throttle after the outside zone two because it looked like he was washing out a little bit. But... Um, definitely going to be a better score than what he just made. We got high 80s projected, so let's see what he's going to get, because 76 is what he originally got. Yeah. 85. 85. There you go. All right, so now it's probably safe to say that if you're in the 70s, you're going to be in deep trouble. Yeah, you're not safe. In the 80s, yeah. you're pretty safe. But there you go. Next up at the line is going to be 515. Nobushige Kumakubo. And it's Speedster Racing with Team Orange 370Z, powered by a VR38. Powerhouse debuted the car last event. Here he is to uh, showcase what he could do in this car. Coming in that outer zone one right here. Unfortunately, had to bail Ooh. out. Look at that flick coming back around. Nice. Unfortunately, had to bail out a last round because of mechanical issues. But here he is showcasing his skills and what he does best on the track. Beautiful job. That was a very clean run. I would have to say that's a very similar to the higher scores that we had that were in the 90s from the first um, um, qualify runs that we had. And speaking of, uh, so obviously most of y'all have heard the name or it's familiar to you. So yeah, he's the owner of Ebisu Circuit. Yeah, and, and a very, very a veteran of a driver. Oh yes. Um, and his specialty is tandeming. So uh, this run is definitely gonna get him into uh, tomorrow's top 32. Yeah, you got an so, 82, there you go, an 89. 89, there you go. But yeah, like I was saying, so it's actually a fall monsuity right now going on at Ebisu, so. Yeah, exactly. So, man, that would be nice if I was there. I know. Driving. <laughs> I, I could do a lot of watching. But, but this is, yeah, yeah, that's right. But this is a, definitely a good way to spend the weekend, too. I am here at Fuji Speedway watching Formula Drift Japan. Final round. Now is car number 18, Tetsuya Iha from Okinawa. Car is Okinawa with Nor. Let's see his 200 crown rip it on the track. Earlier, he had a major mistake, which, you know, caused him to dock a lot of points. But here we go. Let's see him make no mistakes and hit all these zones. And look at that zone he hit right there. Let's see this flick coming back. Not quite aggressive on the flick, but definitely hit the zone and is getting where he wants his car needs to wow. be. But he's not quite having that huge flare he usually throws out. But I must say, Very hands clean, down, way yeah. better. Yeah, it cleans, fluidity, everything. So see what the judges have for him.
Wow, everybody's definitely stepping it up for the second run. But yeah, definitely can't complain. Beautiful weather today here at Fuji. Have a little bit of a breeze, but the breeze is nice because it, it flushes out the track for the next uh, competitors. We'll just see how it does tomorrow whenever it comes to the tandem battles because we're right where the sun blazes in and shines in and the between a combination between the sun and the smoke isn't a good recipe for a tandem battle. But there you go, there's a view of Fuji. There you go, 86. So got went from a 70 to an 86 for his final qualify run. Pretty sure he's not used to this weather coming from Okinawa flying up here. Yeah, it's probably cold. It's an adjustment. <laughs> that elevation. I, mean, you know, I, I think it's cold yeah. or kind of chilly. It's really chilly up here. But but the car that's not cold right now is this one coming up to the gate. Because it's hot. It's hot. Hot pink. Number 168, Masayomi Noah in her brand new JZX100 Mark II. Yeah, I'm she scored everything. an impressive 84-point run earlier yeah. for her first run, first ever qualified run in this car, and this is the first time she's competing in it, too. So. Debut in the car, new power plant under the hood. This is all new to her, so we'll see how she's going to perform on her second run. She always going to throw out because she got an 84, which is pretty solid. We'll see if she can get this car in the 90s. Here she is coming into outer zone one. Look at that, coming Whoa. into outer zone one. Woo! See her flicking back around into outer zone two. Man, can she hold clean. it all the way through? Coming into outer zone three here. Beautiful job holding it all the way into the finish. <laughs> and I must say, that was way better than an 84. I want to see if these judges got her back because, oh my gosh, this, that this was car very is something. Impressive, yeah. Maybe she should. Oh, man. She's definitely showing out in this car and showing that it has a lot of improvements and a lot better gadgets than her last car. Wow, it's like, I guess the car is lighter. It has more power. I mean, look at this. There's, that's a lot it's of just throttle. Skating. Look at that, too. Oh, yeah. The fluidity of that. And look at holding that angle all the way yeah. through that outer zone three. Wow, that was a pretty impressive run by Masayo Minoa in her brand new build. And I'm telling you, this is a brand new car. Yeah. Because you were saying it's been, it was in the works for a while. Yeah, probably for like two years. Because, I mean, I think I saw the chassis get put to, or the, the cage put in it the year before, la maybe last year. It was last year. Beginning yeah. last year or something. Yeah. So it's almost a full year, full two years of in the mix of this car. And they're finally here. And they made a mean machine. 90, 90. points. Man, her, uh, you know, her husband's got, you know, he's got some, he's got some shoes to fill. But yeah, that's going to be an interesting battle. I hope to see in the future is yeah, between. She's, she's leading her husband, Shinji Minoa, by a point. So. Yes. <laughs> but it's, it'll be an interesting battle to see her JZX100 Mark II versus his JZX100 Mark II when he gets it fixed and up. Yeah, and up who's going to do the dishes? Who's going to make dinner? <laughs> you know? There you go. All right, so let's move along to car number 73, Ikuo Saito. He landed a 74-point run. He definitely is probably on the bubble, maybe even below that. He needs to do something to get a higher score for the second one. He's got a veteran of a driver here in the FE Japan Series. Here he is coming, already initiated from into outer zone one. Real deep into outer zone outer one there. Zone one. And flicks Ooh, nice it. Flick in the outer oh. zone. Can he hold it all? The, you had a little hesitation leaving outer zone two, but able to carry all the way through to the finish from the inside clip. But yeah, he had that little bobble, which messed with a little bit of his fluidity throughout his run. Yeah, I'm not going to say that that's going to be a straightening, but that was some hard steering that he did at the inside clip. Let me go ahead and check that out one more time. That was a huge mistake that Sa um, Saito did. He did a good job right here on filling outside zone one and flicks it right there. Then, yeah, there was a, I mean, the tire wasn't completely straight, but he did a lot of uh, uh, adjustments. Um, I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna credit him for the commitment that he had, but definitely uh, not one of the cleaner runs that he has made, uh, I believe. So we got a 74 on his first qualify run. We got some. Uh, Mid 70s, mid to high or mid to high 80s. Sorry. 
So we'll see what the judge's total is going to come out to. 84. So 10-point increase. So like you said, he definitely had to get out of the 70s. He put himself in the 80s. And he should be safe, but it's too early to tell. We still got another half of the bracket or half of the listing left. But coming up next is going to be it's Jamakan, it's Kenji Yamada, car number 888 with the Laudata Club Racing VL S15 Sylvia. Still rocking the SR20, and he I think he blew his motor a few rounds ago, and now he is back and strong. This is another exciting driver. He got a 67 uh, for his yeah, first run. Yeah, he didn't hit any of the zones. He was real shallow. He played it real narrow. But I think he was just getting a kind of feeler, and I think he's going to rip this time. So here he is coming around the bend, coming up to the three cone. Got a steer and initiate right here, coming into outer zone. Oh! 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 Whoa. Whoa, what just happened? I have no clue. Man, Man that was, uh, I don't know, something had, had, something must have happened in the car or something. Oh, I'm curious if his steering wheel kind of popped loose or something. Or his steering wheel, like, I mean. Well, I don't know if that was like a super hard understeer. I don't know, but that was a good save because that would have been a scary crash right there. Man. Woo. But yeah, 67, I don't think it's going to be too safe to jump in top 32 with the 67 and an incomplete. Um, but he definitely dodged a very scary situation right there. There he is cruising off. Oh man, that was uh, pretty scary because it didn't look like he was trying to even slow down for a little while. Maybe his brakes stopped working? I don't because know. Because it looked like he got on his e-brake. Oh yeah, uh, he yanked it right at the end? Yeah, right at the end. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll try to find out what happened to him. But man, that's uh, too bad. A tough luck for Yamada. He is knocked out here because, I mean, I think it's 67 is probably one of the lowest scores. Yeah. And that's not going to make it into the top 32 because we're looking at high 80s and 90s, you know. For our qualifiers. Yeah. yeah. So so next up, he got an 82, number 13, Yasuhiro Takaki. And his T-squares with DGR, good ride. T-square, Origin Labo, 180SX. I'm just, that was a mouthful. I'm there. just super proud of Kenny. He was able to start to call Takaki, Takaki, not Takakaki. That's a lot of Kakis. All right, so let's go ahead and see what Takaki has. It's been a in long storm season. For us. And initiated, fills outside zone one. Coming around, he got an 82. So let's see if he can complete it. Came off the throttle a little bit there. Let's see if he's going to finish all the way to outer zone three, but not quite all the way out to outer zone three for him. Yeah, but I would have to say everybody here is upping their scores in my uh, department here, the, the style department, I guess. Um, it looks like a lot of people are getting it a little bit more. I'm not going to say that was the most um, exciting driving that um, that was out here today. Uh, a little bit of wobble there, going to outside zone one. Um, the rate of angle going from outside zone one to two isn't crazy. A little bit of a correction coming off of the inside clip one. Um you know, we are being very picky, but obviously there's so many talent. There's so much talent out here. We have to nitpick to get the scores. Um, but uh, definitely uh, style-wise, it was better than what he did uh, for his first run. But now let's see what the angle. Oh, there you go. 83. So one point increase on his final score. Should be pretty safe, but couldn't tell you. There you go, ready to go at the line is going to be 4-4-4. Takatoshi Imamaida in his 5X Navigate Penske KRC S14. Yeah, I remember his first run uh, earlier was very exciting to see, and I know there was probably mistakes made here and there for the line and angle side of it, but just the style score 
Um, I think he was the first guy that broke the 34 or 35 point mark out of 40. Um, so let's see what he's got for the second one right here. Wayne said this is his favorite car, uh, the, the way the color is and stuff like that too. So let's see how um, he can impress everybody out here. There he is coming up to outer zone one, got an uh, 85, definitely couldn't get down. Uh, oh, coming in with a burst entry and not able to hold it. But yeah, he was, he was rocking a massive spoiler earlier uh, during practice, but I think it was probably too much downforce, too much grip for him coming through these uh, faster uh, his outer zones. And he kind of got rid of it, but yeah, there you go. Got it incomplete, so he's gonna roll with an 85 for qualify. All right, so I got word from, I guess they have a battery isolator or something on the Audi. Yeah. And they, uh, earlier I asked uh, them what happened to the car and stuff like that. So I guess something went wrong in that sort. That's probably why the car didn't make it out to the first, the first qualify and also didn't get to to, to run the um, practice runs. But at, also at the same time, oh, yeah, also at the same time, um, it probably wasn't fixed completely when it was making when they were making the second run. So it's tough luck for them. Yeah. Next um, up is going to yeah. be number 64 Yoshimi Mori with Team Mori S15. Remind me to ask for his birthday uh, later today. Yes. <laughs> to find out the mystery man's birthday. So here he um, is coming into that three, two, one to outer zone one. Beautiful job into outer zone one. Flick it. Ooh, Ooh nice, nice flick. flick. Oh, <laughs> coming into inside clip one to outer zone three. Had a little hesitation leaving that flick, but man, did we Jinx. just repeat? <laughs> <laughs> we just like synced. That was like a uh, stereo sound right there yeah, from. Should we, we? What happened? Did I spit? No, I said, should we touch fingers oh, now? Oh, touch fingers. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were just trying to <laughs> get close to me or something. But, yeah, that was a very, very cool flick by Maury. That was super unlike a 64-year-old, let's say. I want to um, be that cool when I'm 64. Yeah, but right there he did have to uh, correct a lot, um, dig himself out of there. So definitely going to give him um, some some love for the hustle he did um, for that the flick. But he also... The coolness that he did was followed by a, a, a correction that he had to make as well. So yeah. let's see what he's going to get for a score. Got an 81 initially, so we'll see right here. But yeah, that Audi, oh, there you go, 80. Ah, unfortunately, a little bit lower than his first score, so 81 is going to what he's going to have to take to the table for top 32 qualification. But yeah, back to the Audi, it's just rough because that, that thing sat for, what, a, a whole season. Or better yet, a season and a half. Yeah, because I think they were trying to build the Audi A1. Uh, drift car with a K motor or something, I think. Uh, and I think that car is far from being complete, and they just brought the A5 out just to show face because it's in Fuji. Um, but we'll see that car sometime, somewhere. But here's an exciting driver right here. Got an 82 initially. Let's see what he's going to do. Yuji Saito in his Team Next Dream with Total Car Glitter VR-powered S15. Look at this car. This is a very exciting car. This car looks like a really fast car, too. And it has an aggressive appearance. And here he is coming up to the 3 2 1 early initiation, coming to outer zone 1. Look at this. Nice. Filling outer zone 1. Look at that smoke one. cloud behind him. Nice Looking job at outside zone 2. Off. Oh, correcting a little bit to get to that inside clip and not diving too hard in, coming to outer zone 3. And if he just didn't do that correction, he had it set up. I mean, could have been a little deeper in the outer zone, too, but that's probably what caused him to do that little correction so he didn't get too deep into inside clip one. Man, I would have to say, I mean, that's the same thing as earlier we saw with Maury. Um, we saw something exciting, but at the same time, it was followed by a mistake that they made. That's something that we have to look into closely right there. He kind of glides through outside zone two, then the car wavers a little, and he had to, you know, fix himself. Going out to outside zone three after the end clip, and that was a mistake that was made by um, Saito, but I would have to say a good hustle by him. And let's see what the score is going to be for his second qualify run. 87. 87 points. Still 87 points. So if you just imagine if he didn't make that mistake, um, he probably would have been in the 90s, easily in the 90s. Yeah. All right. So the next driver is going to be driving, uh, making their lap after these short messages that we have in the break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
滑りやすい凍った道でもちゃんと曲がるちゃんと止まる高い安全性能を発揮アイスカートセブンにしようセブンセブンセブンやるー横浜やるー革新のカーボンベゼル<笑>ブルートゥース搭載 G ショックカシオ Made in Japan. Breed. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Tenton to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshi. Champion of Tortame no Clutch. Ogura レーシやすい凍った道でもちゃんと曲がるちゃんと止まる高い安全性能を発揮アイスカートセブンにしようセブンセブンセブンやるや横浜やる革新のカーボンベゼルブルートゥース搭載 G ショックカシオ Japan. Breed. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Tenton to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshi. Champion of Toru Tame no Clutch. Ogura Racing
of brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Valenti. And here we are back after those commercials for the second half of the second part of qualifying here at Fuji International Speedway. Look at the backdrop we have. It looks so nice. It looks so beautiful. But Pop I wish it was a little bit more warmer and no wind because we're freezing. This is probably our most pitch picturesque track that we come to. Yeah, so car number 53, Mitsunori Yoshimura, could not make his second run because he lost oil pressure in his car. So they are sitting out for the second run and his run, his first run, he got a 75. So I don't even know if that's good enough, but we will see. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and move along to car number 80, Utah Komatsu in the Komatsu Racing IS350. He has a 75 for the first run too. So he definitely has to up his score for um, the second run. Yeah, his first run, that initiation he had coming up to the 3-2-1, he did some hard flick and we were like, maybe if he held off a little bit and held it to the outer zone one, it'll probably carry him a lot better. So we'll see what he's gonna do and what his game plan is. And look at that, this time he's come a little bit more subtle. Looks like he had a little hesitation there, but there's that nice split coming in outer zone two, riding it through the inside clip, not quite all the way deep enough into that inside clip, but riding into the outside zone of outer zone two or three. Yeah, so like you said, there was a little bit of a bobble going to outside zone one, and the flick was really nice. That was really cool. Um, but everything after that too, it doesn't look super stable um, and uh, fluid, let's say. So let's go ahead and check out the replay one more time right there. Doesn't make it all the way out to outside zone one. Outside zone two, he does a good job, but it looks like he is kind of getting washed out where the yeah. inside clip is. And it, he was a little bit late on getting back on uh, getting I'll back on throttle. I'll afterwards give him this. He's, well. he's giving a lot more aggression, aggression than early on on the year. I don't know if it's because the power upgrade that he got with his powerhouse or, or what, but... He's slowly, you know, getting understand. This is his second season in the car. Last season, we only had three rounds, so he only had three rounds to compete in it. He's slowly getting more uh, understanding of the car, but I want to see him like he was. There you go, 80, so a lot better in, than a 75. I want to see him like he was in his original car, his JZX90, how he's performing. So we'll see if he's going to pick it up. Um, in the top 32, looks like 80 should be pretty safe and uh, moving on. But here we are, next up is gonna be Nice 63, Daichi Mizutani, the Mizutani Jidosha, Marusho Racing S15. I don't even know if an 80 is safe. I know it's very close. I'm not gonna count all the numbers right now because I'm sorry, but. I... You're cold. Yeah, I'm really, really cold right now. Especially after we use the bathroom. I know. And then a uh, funny, funny little story right now, since um, Kenny's on crutches, I'll talk about this later. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get back to the program right here. <laughs> Mizutani got an 82 on his first run. Let's see how he's gonna perform and what, he's, what kind of flair he's gonna show, cause now he's in a 2J packed S15. Coming around the outer zone one, Nice job, Outer Zone 1. Let's see how he's going to flick it. Nice little flick right there coming out of Zone 2. Could have oh. waited a little bit longer. Had a little hesitation fix. Yeah, that second half was not what I wanted to see. But, you know, he got an 82 on an initial run. This might be a little enough to give him a little bit more. But he had that huge correction. Not huge correction, but correction. Lacking in the fluidity of that second part of the course. Let's see. Here he is coming in. Nice flick. But 
but you can see the hesitation coming to that inside zone, how he had to counter really hard. So let's see, the judges are taking a look and see what kind of correction, how hard his correction was, if it's a full straight or not, coming into that inside clip. So here it is, another replay for the judges. It's about mid to lower 80s for his score. Like I said, he got an 82 on his first qualifying run, so let's see if this was just enough to boost him up a little bit more. You're just joining, this is our last round. Here you go, here's a uh, top view. So that first portion, you can see the car coming up on the top right hand side of the screen. We're unable to see any of that. We see it off the screen and then right whenever they hit the three, two, one and come around the bend, that's when we start getting view of them and we have perfect view of the outer zone two or one, two and the inside clip. So yeah, you can see how he kind of washed out a little bit deep on that inside clip to outer zone three. All right. that. It wasn't like it would have been an uh, unchaseable lead, but at the same time, he did cut in a lot. It was pretty much of an underscore, uh, underscore, under, understeer at the inside clip one, where he was, the car was going sideways, but basically he was sliding sideways and he had to actually steer into the turn um, to, to make a correction. So that's pretty much a huge understeer there. Okay. And we're going to have to give him an incomplete because I mean, it's, it's the same when you're understeering, when you're doing a transition. Yeah. Um, it's just that the car is just basically sliding sideways. And if you're uh, at that corner, if you're cutting to the left and your tire is going more than center and straight, basically you're, yeah, that's what I saw know, on the replay yeah, there. So. You could see how he went from full lock to turning his tires completely and reversing the, yeah, so the turn. we're going to have to incomplete that, uh, run. Unfortunate um, to Mizutani, but he has an 82. We'll see how he does. So next up is going to be Yoshi Ayasaki in his Origin Labo Racing S15. Got an 83 on his first qualify run. Rocking the SR20. Coming around to Outer Zone 2. Beautiful job into Outer Zone 1 and Outer Zone 2. Nice job on the inside clip and carrying it all the way through to that outer zone three. Could be a little deeper in outer zone three, but not a bad job for that overall run by Asaki. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if that's the most he's gonna be able to do, but it looks like a replica of his first run. So it's like uh, he made another run just like his first run. Um, so I don't know if that was any more better than their first run. Now, Robbie's just reading some of these comments. Yes, that is a rough score for the last one for Mizutani, but like he was explaining, it all comes down to that fine details. And, you know, yes, his car had the momentum to carry the drift, but it's a matter of, there you go, 86, a huge, not a huge increase, but three-point increase. So he got an 86 from his 83 initial run. But, yeah, that's what caused him to get a zero on that. But here we yeah. are coming up is number 100, Andrew Gray in the Team Cosimo with Power Vehicles, Lexus RC. Got an 87 on his first qualify run. This is definitely a track that he, uh, his car is built for. Yeah, so um, just like earlier, you know, like if somebody tied a score and somebody did a similar run and you got a tied score and if one guy understeered and the other didn't, who are you gonna let go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just the call. Because an understeer, yeah, understeer at the end of the day is a mistake that he made. Yeah, and it's a huge mistake. That there he is, made, coming so. through the three, two, one, coming into this outter zone. Uh -oh. oh, not quite into that. Not quite into those zones. Missed both zones right there, but coming in, finishing strong in this outer zone three and taking out the pylon into the finish. I'm not sure if he's just too gripped up, um, but he did not, he wasn't able to float himself out to the outside zone one and outside zone two as well as he should right there. He came a little, uh, he came a little short on the uh, he's, yeah, outside he, zone one. He seemed a little safe from what I would expect with an 87 point score from him, but 
you know, at the end of the day, he's preparing himself for the top 32 <laughs> qualification. Yeah, because I think his, looking at his score for the 87, he's pretty much in already. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but still, you know, you have to make sure that you make a good lead run. Um, that's going to hurt you, you know, on the tandem as well. So. Yeah. There you go, 80 for Andrew Gray. Yeah, so his 87 point run on this first run is uh, going to be the higher one. But we'll have to see how he performs in his tandem battles. Yeah, so the next driver after Andrew Gray is car number five, the wild child Tomoki Tanaka in his B style. Good ride with Tetsujin JZX100 Chaser. Got a zero on his first qualifier run. Oh yeah, he's sitting on a zero. Yeah, so. so he's got, you know, hopefully he doesn't come too wild and he brings out a solid score. But, you know, you never know. You can hear the wind in the mic. Sorry about that. It's been pretty windy all day, but hey, we had clear skies and some uh, awesome drifting going on. Here he is coming through. Yeah, so another exciting driver sitting on a zero. Let's see what he's gonna do for the second round. I know he's not gonna hold back either. Coming into outer zone one right there. Not quite all the way in the zone, but here he is flicking it hard, coming through that zone. Look at outer zone two, holding it through, but carrying it all the way through to outer zone three. Had a struggle into that inside clip, but definitely getting a run in the books. So, man, uh, I would have to say that the flick was really cool, but at the same time, he's making sure he's checking everything right here for that outer zone two. Yeah, but the the. Uh, Yeah, coming into that outer zone too, he had a long e-brake pull and washed out a little bit from inside clip right there. Yeah, so now we're going to talk about we're going to talk about unchaseable lead and that was a huge stall made by uh, Tanaka right there after the outside zone two and the in the inside clip area where he had to wait for the car to settle to get back on gas and that is a huge stall which could actually uh, screw up the chase car um that's 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 there so yeah 77 i mean not a hundred percent safe on there We'll see. Up next is going to be number 19, Yuchi Amagai, in the perfect style with good right S15. Sitting at the line, ready to go. So we'll see. Oh, correction, sorry, 74. I didn't catch where they corrected. Which one was the... No, I think it was a style. It was a style. Um, I think it, they added it up wrong. But then, yeah, 74. So, pretty much, that was a huge stall at the inside clip, um, and that's pretty much almost going to be an in, uh, how can I say it, unchaseable lead, I believe. So now we have Yuichi Amagai, car number 19 with perfect style with good ride, S15 Sylvia. Earlier he had a good run. He's going to get the second run. Here he is coming around the bend, coming up to the 3 2 1. Nice initiation at the two cone, coming into outer zone one right here. Not all the way out to the outside full zone. Full throttle all this. the way to outer zone two. He's going to be able to hold it through outer zone three here. Coming up, throwing some angle into outer zone three, but that inside, that transition from outer zone two to outer zone three, that inside clip kind of messed him up just a little bit. Yeah, that was a little bit of a bobble there, but uh, very exciting to see and uh, pretty hard, um, a pretty good challenge uh, made by Amagai. So interested to see what the rest of the, uh, the judges have for the scores.
Look at that right there, sweeping through outer zone two, missing a little bit of outer zone, or the inside clip there. But nice finish in that outer zone three. We'll see here what the judges have for Amagai. Yeah, this Amagai. wasn't this uh, this case wasn't as bad um, at or it wasn't as bad uh, like uh, Tanaka's where he had a bigger stall uh, after the outside zone two going to the inside clip uh, one. Three. So a little bit of a drop on his score. So he's going to go ahead and have to take his 84 from his initial qualify run. Yeah, so we don't want to see the car wash out like that. Like, they just pretty much glide and wait for the car to settle to get back on gas, get back on throttle um, to go towards, you know, the inside clip and, you know, through the inside clip to the outside zone three. Next up at the line right there is number 99, Kazuya Matsukawa and his Hiroshima Toyota Team Drew. Car by 1GR, let's see what he's going to do. He got an 80. Five for his initial qualifying run. Here he is coming up to outer zone one. Nice fill of outer zone one to see how hard he's going to flick it coming nice back to outer job. zone two. Outer zone two could have been a little deeper into outer zone two, oh, but whoa, whoa, struggling whoa. right here, leaving that zone. Ooh. Luckily, Fuji has a huge washout area because that was very scary at that end coming into outer zone three. See the replay here. 85 is what he's going to have to keep. Yeah, I don't know if the car cut out or did something, but um, right there outside zone one looks uh, very nice. And I like how he did the transition, not all the way out to outside zone two, but right there there's a wavering, and it looks like it's not spinning the tire as much as it's supposed to. Um, so something must have happened um, during that run. He is going to get an incomplete for the second run. But he does have an 85 point run that he did score for the first run, uh, which is probably going to bring him into uh, the top 32 for tomorrow. So let's see if they can figure out the kinks and make sure that the car is squared out for tomorrow. Here at the line now is going to be triple six Shuichimano in his Chari Boy style Vitor tire S13. Sorry. One via. Nice aggressive uh, setup there. See how he's going to do. He had a 77, definitely not quite in the safe zone, 100%. So he has a lot to, a lot on the table that he can, uh, he can pick up. So let's see how he's going to do here, coming through the chicane, coming around the bend, of, of the bend, approaching the 3-2-1 cone here. Took it real subtle, just like he's doing now but they came out pretty aggressive. So let's see how aggressive he's coming up to this outer zone one. This outer zone one, not too bad. Hit the outer zone one. Kind of a slow transition, but still had some fluidity there. But leaving that inside clip had a little bit of hesitation hitting that outer zone three. Yeah, so this is very similar to his first run. Um, it's very smooth, but at the same time, it's not, there's nothing edgy about the run. He's pretty much just drifting through the track. And it's all gonna probably fall under the hands of the line and the angle judge. Because a very uh, slow paced run, no hard, uh, huge mistakes made by, um, by Mono. But definitely not uh, one of his uh, most <clears throat> exciting runs. Yeah, it seems like the shorter courses are more hit, hit, more for him. Well, I mean, it's all going to come down to, like, the grip and the power that yeah. they have because this is a huge track. Yeah, he's know? slowly brushing up to these bigger tracks. But, yeah, like, Okuibuki and all those other ones, I've seen him perform very well. Look at 82 yeah. right there. So, you know. Yeah, but he does up the score from the 77 to an 82. So, so beautiful job, but definitely needs to carry that through if he gets to top 32 into his tandem battles and, you know, land that solidified run because a lot of these guys have been very aggressive from the start all the way through. And he's kind of thrown, slowly brought that aggression throughout the track. 
So here we are coming up is number 17, Jin Horino in his Good Ride Team Tops Racing, Project Mew S15, got a 78 on his first qualify run. We've seen nothing but amazing runs from this guy, so he definitely got thrown off guard getting that 78 on his first run. So here he is coming up to the 3-2-1, already initiating. Let's see what he's gonna throw down. Makes his way out to the outside zone one. Transition to outside zone two. Not a bad transition, but couldn't quite get all the way on the inside. Clip right there, and ooh, ooh! Almost lost it right there at the finish, definitely. Gonna have to relook at that finish right there. So here he is, the replay coming up to three, two, one. Could have been a little deeper in outer zone two or one and two. Two wasn't too bad, but that inside clip definitely missed that. And then right here at the finish, he just whipped it out or. He whipped, he whipped what out? <laughs> His back end. All right. Um, I don't know how you're doing this right now, Kenny, but it's so cold. My mouth is hard to talk because the wind is constantly hitting our face right now. Yeah, you're right. And I hope you guys are warm. <laughs> and toasty at the house. <laughs> Wherever you're at. No. It's pretty cold. But, you know, I guess we better get you. There you go, 83. So definitely uh, an improvement. 83 is almost close to that safe zone, but not quite sure yet. But going back to what we were talking about, the cold, we better get used to this. We still got two rounds of FDJ2. What are you and talking about? And one's in about? December. <laughs> exactly. This FDJ2 in December is going to be at Nico Circuit. The one at the end of the month on the Thanksgiving weekend is going to be at Suzuka Circuit. Um, so, yeah. Until then, here we are for Fujinaka in the TCP Magic Awa Tire Good Ride RX7 FD, powered by a three rotor coming into outer zone one here. He's blazing through and right Look at there, that. makes his way out to the outside zone one. Smooth that's a little bit more, but that's um, a little more of what I would see. But yeah, I had that little correction coming from the inside clip. It looks like that's a tire off at. Not sure if he's having issues with the vehicle because this is very unlike him having the amount of corrections he had on both qualify runs. Yeah, the flare that we usually see from him doesn't seem like it's here today uh, because he's a lot more of an aggressive driver. It looks like it's a very smooth and safe run. It's right there too. There's a, a few things that he did um, to, he had to make a few corrections at the inside clip um, as well. So, so we'll see if that was enough to give him a, a boost from his 75 first qualify run. We shall see here. There you go, 70, a little bit of a boost, but not sure if it's quite in the safe zone. Man, I don't even know if the state 70 is gonna be good enough to make it into the top 32. Hopefully this next driver will kind of thaw you up and get you a little bit more excited because I know he did last, you know, first part of qualifying. I know you were falling asleep a little bit. And then here you go, Kanta Yanaglita comes up and scores a 93 on his first qualify run, throwing down. So we'll see what he's going to do for a second. I mean, he has nothing to lose at this point. Right now he's tied for first place. Yeah, but you know what? I think a lot of people are struggling right now too since it is a big track and the sun's kind of, it's not going down, but the sun's not on us. And the track temperature's probably, you know, oh, getting yeah. lower too. So the track is probably cold. And um, that means, you know, air pressure and the amount of grip that you have could be uh, changing by the minute. So no, I mean, it must I don't, be a hard condition for the uh, driver. I'm not gonna lie. All the conditions that he's been in, I think he's gonna be solid. Here he yeah, is, look at that. He's, he's just like, already you know ripping. Just start he's warming his tires here. up the whole way up. Coming up to outer zone and one he here. Makes it. Boom! Outside zone one Coming into outer zone two. Look at that flick. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. Nice Coming to inside job. zone. Inside clip right there to outer zone three. Beautiful job by Kata Yonaguida. Finishing strong there. That flick from outer zone two, insane. I mean, I, 
He got a 93 for his first qualify run. I, I feel this was a, a lot more flair this time. Look at that, ripping through before he got to the 3-2-1, warming them tires up, ready to go. Here he is. Could a little bit been a little deeper in outer zone one, but look at that flick. Dude, I like the way his car through. is good enough going to inside clip. Like he flicks it and then he carries it all the way through to outer zone three. So beautiful job by Kanta Yanaguida with Team Orange. Ready to see this score, see if it boosted him from a 93 and put him in that first place position. Here's that overview that we were talking about. You could see Robbie and I's blind area over there on the top right coming around this bend, hitting that 3-2-1. Once they hit that, we can see them uh, coming around to the inside clip or outer zone one and two. Boom, wow. that hard yeah, flick. look at that. And look at how smooth it is. Look at the smoke trail doesn't stop. I mean, he. I think he lets off a little bit right when he does a transition at the outside zone too, but that was a very beautiful run. Oh, right there, 95. 95 points, so we got a leader right here. So a 93 with a 95, but let's see if that's going to be enough and see if Ishikawa is not going to come up and steal that from him. There you go. We can hear the crowd going off the off the wall here. Triple five, 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 five. Yukio Fausto is up and ready to go with side X Japan with sideways experience. S15. I should just go ahead and throw my mic over to them and hear them cheer. They're ready, anticipating, ready for his run. He unfortunately got a 78 because he had a huge correction after outer zone two. So let's see if he can button that up and get himself in that. 90 state where he wants to be. Here you go, online fan favorite and fan favorite in the crowd today. Here he is coming through the chicane, coming up around the bend, coming up to the 3 2 1. Here you go, the purple is. Oh, there he is, there he goes, right there, 3 2 1 initiating right at the three cone, coming up to that outer zone one. There you go, hitting the outer zone two right there, coming to that inside clip. Beautiful job on that inside clip to outer zone three right there, but could have been a little deeper in those zones for sure. But once again, Yukio Fausto throwing that flare with that smoke show. And I mean, it was a it was a clean run by Yukio, but I'm not gonna say that that's the most exciting run I've seen that he usually does. And it looks like he was slowing when he was uh, approaching the 3 2 1 cone. He doesn't make it out to the outside zone one. Um, does okay at the outside zone two, but right there, it looks like he's a little late on getting back on uh, throttle at the inside clip area after the outside zone two. There you go. There's his fans. And I guarantee there's going to be more tomorrow for the top 32. So. Fan favorite right there, Yukio Fausto. Let's see what he's going to get from his 78, where it's going to boost him in the scores. Yeah, there wasn't a huge flick either. It was a clean run, but I'm not going to say that that was the best run that I've seen yeah. uh, Fausto, Yukio do. 79. 79, there you go. Man, that's like... That's on that borderline. Yeah. Um, but I must say, throughout the season, I'll give Yukio Fausto that. I mean, he's hovering right at the 11th position overall right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's done a phenomenal job, and he's done a lot of growth throughout the season. So he definitely has a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, he does. Um, but here you go. Another individual that's blowing it up is number 33, Junya Ishikawa, in his Hiroshima Toyota Team Droopy ZN686. Got a 93 tied. Uh, uh, in, in the initial first qualifier run. So let's see if he can step up to the plate like Kanta did and get a higher score than a 93. And here he is coming in outer zone one. Not too bad. Nice, nice flick. flick. Oh, Ooh, kicking oh, those pylons no. over. And correcting right there a little bit from inside clip. But man, came super aggressive into outer zone two. And... I don't think we have pylons over there anymore. I think they're located somewhere else. They're gone. 
Here's the replay. Early on initiating low in the 3-2-1, coming to outer zone. I don't know if that affected him coming to that outer zone one, but. Yeah, he he, he had to make a huge correction right there. Um, he had to cut in a lot, to. It was almost trying to reinitiate, too. So that's pr pretty much uh, the same situation as uh, Minu Mizutani, I believe, uh, where we had to give him an incomplete where. If he didn't dip that, well, for Ishikawa's um, case, if he didn't dip the tire, uh, if he didn't have that mistake where he had to wash, or if the front end didn't wash out like that, and if he didn't have to cut in like that, then he probably could have. He probably could have uh, kept drifting uh, the way he did, but yeah, that's gonna be an incomplete for Ishikawa. But he's but, sitting I mean, on a 93. 93 so. solid. He's still sitting in second place right now. He's definitely making these uh, course workers. Work pretty hard fetching those those cones or those pylons. <laughs> Next up at the line is going to be number 56, Naoto Suenaga, in his Team Cosmo with Power Vehicles S15. Suenaga got an 83 on his first qualify run. He suffered some significant damage at the last round at Okayama, but it's good to see his car back out here with that sweet. Sweet kit. <laughs> sweet. I was I was looking at it, it's the Kazama kit, but oh, man, I just I, wanted I was, to make I sure. I, I I've been I've been slacking like right now really because I'm super cold. Right? Yeah, Robbie usually picks up my slack, but you know, he's he's letting me down in the last round. We got the <laughs> the fans <laughs> over here yelling too, but that's cool. I. I'm liking this to hear a crowd say something. Um, I mean, it's a very small crowd um, today because, you know, it's a qualified day. And most likely tomorrow Saturday, we're going to be you know expecting a little bit more people coming in here. But uh, this is kind of cool to hear people actually cheering people on. So I really like that. So here we go. So now we're going through the chicane coming up to the bend for the 3 2 1. All right, so initiates way before the three, two, one cones and makes it all the way out to the outside zone one, makes it all the way out to the outside zone two. Getting that inside and clip there. Had a little waiver there coming up to the outer zone three, but finishing strong. Like I said, 83 on his first qualify run. Yeah, so that was a, a style score. Uh, why it's definitely better than the thir uh, the first the, the the first scored run. Hey, I appreciate the compliments out there too. But there you go. There's a solid finish right there, coming into uh, for Suenaga with an 83. So let's see if that was enough for him. But definitely had that waiver right after that inside clip one. But no, I love having the. There you go, 80 88. So huge boost. But yeah, I love having the live chat. We usually have positive things out there. I know there's a few negative things out there. Oh no, on. I don't mind. Hey, you know what? I don't mind the negative stuff too. We're all human, so everybody has. It's you good know, a feedback. Thought. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. You know, so keep um, talk talk smack of uh, Kenny and <laughs> I didn't ask and, that and me. <laughs> I'm okay. I mean, I have no. I mean, I don't. I don't hate anybody or anything. So I, I appreciate you just taking the time watching and giving us comments is good enough. It could be good or bad. I don't, I don't mind at all. Yeah, it's much appreciated. Yeah. So here we are right there. Looks like they're making sure his car is ready to go. It's going to be Tarahita Fukada in this Tanaba SSR Dunlop team or with Weld. JZX 100 Mark II. He got a 90, which was crazy because he threw a lot more flair than what we're used to. Yeah, He's, the gentle giant yeah. usually runs very gently. Yeah, and, gently, you know, this round he, he just came in with a huge flair. But yeah, Fukata is nobody new to the series. He's been here from day one, race one, or round one, I should say, of, of uh, the Formula Drift Japan series. So good to see him still out here competing and doing what he does best. Well, let's see if he can increase that 90 score. I know he's he's one of those that's like, okay, I got a 90, I'm good type thing. Yeah. I'm in it. But I, seeing how he came out last time with the flair that he came out with, I think he's going to actually perform and do something insane, especially with it being round six. Yeah, maybe, last he'll, round. maybe he'll bust a 360 in front of us or something. I mean, someone did know. ask if somebody would do that. <laughs> see, I would have if I was competing. No, just kidding. <laughs> maybe you could check him. Robbie will do it in one of his videos. <laughs> In his MRS. Oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll do it in the Fuga. 
Ooh. Yeah, that, that one's that's that one's easy to do. But I need to get the car. I need to get my cars running, I guess, and situated. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and see how Fukata is going to tackle the second qualifier run here at Fuji Speedway. Let's go. Yeah, here he is coming through the chicane. Got a 90, see if he can increase it. Coming up to this 3-2-1, already initiated early outside of that 3-2-1, coming up to outer zone one and carrying all the way through outer zone one. Had a little bit of a waver oh, though. Wait. He's a little Yeah, high he's... He, he, he went a little too wide from the beginning of the outside zone one where when he made the transition, he was way before outside zone two too. So right there, look at this already. He's like on the line over there. So he's pretty much... Uh, took too much of an outside line, I think, from the initiation, uh, which kind of screwed him up. But you know what? He's sitting on a 90, so maybe he was planning to do something crazy, but he didn't this time, so. All right, so that's an incomplete for Tadahiro Fukada, but he is on, he's, he's sitting on a 90-point run. But next up, a lot of people like this car. Yes, it is a Supra. It's gonna be number 125, Yoshichika Tamagawa in his Car Guy Racing JZA80 Supra. Have you ever owned a Supra? Twin turbo manual Supra? I actually did. Really? Yeah, I actually did. And this is crazy. I bought an automatic um, Supra. And it had a T78 on it. It probably made about five, six hundred horsepower. And um, I remember I went to pick it up, and my son was still in kindergarten. I picked him up with that car, then I blasted down the road, and he was like, "Whoa!" He he did that <laughs> whoa, WTF face um, in the passenger seat. But I mean, that thing was like six grand or something like that. Jeez. And that's like with like a you know standalone so, ECU and everything. So you're a you're an original sore driver. Their chassis are almost the same. Yeah. What, the, what would you prefer? So I think the rear subframe is different. So the way the rear lower arm is or something, I yeah. think the Soar is a little longer. And the Soar has, uh, the JZ30 has the longer wheelbase too. Uh, but pretty much it shares most of the suspension parts, drivetrain parts, except the prop shaft, I think. Um, and I think even the subframe is a bolt-on from both of the cars. So I would have to say that if you don't have enough money to buy a Supra, you can go out and buy a Soar, and uh, it'll perform as close as it is to a Supra because, I mean, Soars are underrated cars. They really are. And everybody talks about it being heavy, but I think I when I used to compete in mine, I think we got ours down to, like, 1,250 pounds or, or 1,250 yeah. kilos, which is about... I think it was like 2920 with me in it. Yeah, and I know you so. said that was like one of your favorite cars that you know, even though it kind of had some mechanical issues here and there, but I mean Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's that that comes with, you know, the whole racing part of it. Yeah. But man, I would like to get another one, you know, one of these days. Yeah, so let's go over some of the sponsors that we have uh with the um, with the series right now. We have G-Shock Edifice it's by Casio, Valenti, Yokama Tires, Bridgestone, Potenza, Dunlop, Goodyear, Toyo Tires, Good Ride, Valino, 5X, Silent Tire, Vitor Tire, Zeknoba Tires Japan, Carport Maruzen, RSR, Brid, Motis, ORC, and I can't read the banners that are going that way. <laughs> he literally was just reading the banners, guys. So. But no, yes, thank you for the sponsors out there. I know you guys got to see a few of the videos, or videos, a few of the commercials. There's, there was actually a new commercial that uh, got produced, what is it, this past week, right? Yeah, we, we do. So I'm uh, hopefully you guys would enjoy the um, commercial that we have, too. Ogura Clutch. Oh, he's in a Graham continue. Lights. Rays. Cusco, Swift, Hot Wheels, Comtech, Saito Roll Cage, CPS, Kazama Auto Service, Rear Racing, Treasure One Company, T Max, Japan Drone Federation, Go and Fun. There you go. And Robin Ishida, Kenneth Harris. And now on to 
the short break that we have. We'll be right back. And you can check out these sponsors' commercials now.滑りやすい凍った道でもちゃんと曲がるちゃんと止まる高い安全性能を発揮アイスカートセブンにしようセブンセブンセブンやるー横浜やるー革新のカーボンベゼル<音楽>ブルートゥース搭載 G-SHOCK カシオ Made in Japan. Breed. What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Bounty. Made in Japan. Breed. 
What's up guys? It's Freddy Gospel and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングクラッチ。ORC The brightness, called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Valenti. Ultimate Lubricant Mortis And here we are back for round six of qualifying. We are here at G-Shock presents Formula Drift Japan Round 6, Fuji International Speedway. And the only reason why he's so excited is because we're down to our last seven drivers of qualifying. No, I think I think what happened was when you're when we're sitting here and we're just kind of watching, yeah. that's why we feel the cold, you know. So I think no, by you were speaking literally... and, you know, being excited, it's going to help me stay warm. Hey, don't let him BS you guys because he was just running in place like five seconds ago. But yeah, so the An exercise, yeah. The delay we had was because Rukata's car was leaking a little bit of oil, got it out of the track, so they were just cleaning it up. And here we are right now with Yoshichika Tamagawa, Tamagawa. in his JZA80 Super, got an 80 on, 82 on his initial qualifying Whoa. run. And there he is coming in with some flair, coming in outer zone two, into, ooh, coming in the inside clip to outer zone three. Not sure the transition from into that inside clip looked a little rough. But we'll have to see this replay here. Yeah, once again, this looks like he was kind of rushing through uh, the track right here. So right here, the outside zone one, I'm not sure if he's all the way out to the outside zone. But he does an okay job right here. Then it looks like this front was washing a little bit, but he had to shallow up a little bit to go through for the in inside clip. My my hand is <laughs> I can't write right now. All right, but the I'll get Robbie to explain the commercials we'll hear in a little bit. But yeah, so let's see if that uh, run right there was good and good enough for the car guy racing JZA80 Supra to get him out of the 82 range and boost him up a little higher. So obviously you guys can oh there you go 86 it was. <laughs> So yeah, I'd have to say uh, the angle and the line um, part of it helped him out a lot. Um, as a style judge, it probably stayed similar from his first run. Uh-oh. Hopefully y'all can hear us, but hey, next up is going to be number 61, Kazuki Hayashi, in his good ride works S15. There we go. And we have picture again. There we go. 
All right, looks like Hayashi is in his car doing his little stretch, getting ready for his second qualifier run. He's sitting on an 81, and I am not sure if that's good enough. Oh, yeah, you were kind of looking at it during yeah, I was the break. At, yeah, I was looking at the scores, but I think if you're in the 70s, most likely you're not going to make it into the top 32 today. So I think he's sitting on the bubble, or maybe this is even a, a no-go for him. So... So we will see here, he, like you said, he got an 81. Hayashi's been in doing some uh, huge improvements throughout the season, so I expect a lot of flair here. He, I'm not sure if he realizes that he might not be too safe sitting in that 81 uh, point position. But here he is, looks like he's getting the green light to go and firing through the chicane right now. Here we are coming up. Coming around the bend, already initiated around the bend to the three cone. A lot of smoke he's laying down already, and Ripping he is up. making it to the outside zone one. Transition to the outside zone two. A little bit of a washing on the front. Yeah, outer zone two, he was a little, sh he was shallow and kind of missed outer zone two. Let's see, let's see if this replay, if it was led by his outer zone one entry. Look at that, real early throwing a smoke show through the 3-2-1. Coming around the bend, coming uphill. Yeah, he, he didn't quite get to outer zone one there. Yeah, and there's not really a huge flick. And I would have to say there's not like a huge uh, angle. He's not pushing crazy angle at outside zone one or two and making a transition either. So I would have to say it was pretty much of an average run. Um, there you go, 85 points. Boom. 85, so four point increase on that, and 85 is right on that fine line too. You should see my handwriting now, it's like <laughs> Minor in my pocket, I'm cold. But look who's up next, it's gonna be number 770, Yusuke Kusawa with Team Cusco Racing in the A90 Supra. He said he loves the control of this car now, he's ready to go, fired up. <laughs> or the last race that he races in this car as he brings out the new GR86 next season. But here he is coming to outer zone one. Beautiful nice job, job in outer zone one. one. Coming back around, nice subtle into outer zone two to the inside clip and riding it all the way around to outer zone three and finishing strong right there by Kusaba. He didn't have crazy flair from the transition, but he, he had it, but nice fluidity just nice floating. Fluidity. Uh, all the way out to the outside air, outside zones. Crazy amount of angle, a lot of throttle. Uh, very nice job. Um, by Kusaba right here, look at that. And he does, uh, looks like he's really tight on the line too where he's bringing the place where it's supposed to be at. Yeah. So. Um, and, you know, there's a good amount of angle throughout the whole track. I don't know. He got an 89 on his first run. That would, had a lot of good fluidity to it, had a lot of control, and it, it would have been a good solid lead run. So see if these judges gave him a little bit more in points for his qualify run, his second qualify run. There you go, 91. 91. There he is in the 90s. Beautiful job by Kusaba. I'm liking this. There's a lot of people that are making it into the 90s. Exactly. Um, very impressive. And, uh, you know, watching practice, too, it looked like everybody was doing a good job there. So it's a matter of if they can, you know, land a nice run within those two qualify runs that they have, those two chances they have. So we're down to our last four cars of the afternoon or the evening, I want to say, for qualifying. Next up, getting his tires warmed up is going to be number 36, Kazumi Takahashi and his TMS Racing Team Cylon Tire BMW, or E92 BMW, powered by 1GR Twin Turbo. A very underestimated engine. Here he is getting pulled up to the line. Car, yeah. Exciting driver, exciting looking car. So yeah, halfway through the season, he swapped it out with the JZX100. I think he did one round. Yeah, one round with it, two rounds with it. And then he brought the E92 uh, BMW back out. 
definitely performed a lot better in this. I know JZX chassis was what he originally was running on. He, he came out here in 2019. So here he is, and what we think performs way better in is this BMW right here. And here he is coming up to 321, initiating, coming into outer zone one. Whoa. Deep into outer zone one. Nice Whoa. flick in outer zone two. Here he is coming to that inside clip to finish off strong here into outer zone three. And beautiful job by Takahashi. That was that was beautiful. Style wise, that was beautiful. That was uh, exactly what I wanted to see as a style judge, style portion of it. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and see what the other judges have to say right here. Look at that. I mean, it's like worked out really good. The only flaw I could see on this run is probably the inside clip where he had a little bit open there. So, man, he went from that full lock to or that full angle and full lock to that inside zone or inside clip. So we'll see here. <laughs> I hear them in the back because we punched our scores in. We don't know what the other judges put in. But... Whoa! <laughs> a 99? See, I'm telling you, the only place they probably docked him for is the inside clip right there. Jeez. So that, we had a few that's... high 90 guesses, but man... Yeah, we uh, I think the angle and the we maxed out the angle on the style judge because I mean that's exactly what we wanted to see. That was a nice amount of flick, a yeah, crazy amount of angle. Turn, yeah. Exactly, that was beautiful. Wow, ninety nine. I bet he's jumping for joy. Man, if he tightened up that in clip, that would have been a hundred, for sure. Getting a lot of sheeshes out there. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's see what uh, Shinji Mino is going to do. He got an 89. Let's see if he can boost 11 points. <laughs> yeah, let's see if we can get 100. Come on, let's go. Now we have 99 points on the line. Now we can see maybe there's cars that are going to go higher than that, which will, the only the only place is the only score you can get higher than that is 100. So let's see somebody get 100. We got three more drivers that have the possibility to do it. Let's go. Here we are right here. Our last three drivers, Shinji Mino is sitting in third place right now with 277 points. Coming around in his JZX 90 Mark II. Uh, ah, not hitting the outer zone. But look at that, coming out with some flair. And I don't think that's gonna be enough to boost him up in that high 90s right there. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, we're, we're already down to the last three, so I'm not, I'm just gonna be dead honest with you. And my, I'm, I'm freezing, but yeah, that's not gonna be in the 90s, I think. Um, and I don't like playing guessing games, but I'm just being straight up honest right now. <laughs> it's really cold. Brutally honest. Yeah. It definitely sounds like a good ramen night tonight. I know. If you haven't had ramen, you know what? Make sure that's a must if you ever come out here and visit. Eat good ramen. Yes. 79. Wow. Not what he wanted. So I must say his wife beat him on the scores today. She got a 90 on her second qualify run. Wow. Which He's making dinner. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's more. I'm guessing Liberty Walk is up next. I think so. I'm not sure. You're. I think you're right. So but now yeah. he is pulling up to the start gate. Tetsuya Hibino driving the LB Racing S15 Silvia with the four rotor twin turbo. They are sitting on an incomplete because of mechanical failures that they had for the first qualify run. I'm pretty sure they all have everything. Uh, maybe to fingers crossed, to toes crossed, or whatever. His first qualify run up into that outer zone too, and he had to destroy it. But here he is coming. Look at that, ripping already through that roundabout, coming up to this three, two, one cone. Art, he's already ready to rip. Look at this, coming into outer zone one, not quite all the way out to outer zone one. There's that flick right there, trying to get this nice score in the books right here. Look at that. Woo! that four rotor twin turbo just screaming down this track he didn't let up there that's for sure yeah it doesn't look like um, 
Looks like they got it a little bit dial, more dialed in this time for sure. No mechanical issues on that run. Could have been a little deeper right there in outer zone one, but hard flick into that outer zone two and able to complete the inside clip to outer zone three transition. Yeah, um, I'm not going to say that that was the most exciting run we saw uh, this weekend either. And it, it was it was almost a little bit on the safer side for probably Hibino as a driver too. But it looks like it's good enough because, you know, it was somewhat exciting um, to get into uh, the top 32. So let's see what the score is going to be. Look at them rolling deep. So we'll see what the scores are. They're anticipating. They're watching the big screen on the Jumbotron 85. Is that going to make it? I don't know. They definitely put them in a in a bind there. The crowd is quiet and very nervous about that uh, that that score. Yeah. So the, that's the, the the team and the crew that Liberty Walk brought over with them. Hopefully, that 85 is good enough for Hibino to make it in uh, to the top 32. But here we are, our last qualifier for the day. Got a 90 on his first qualifier run. Many of you know him. Number eight, Koichi Yamashita, finishing us off right here on, for Team Well, JZX 100 Mark II. He is the champ, he is the points lead, and he is this season's champion at 421. But these, all these drivers are out here fighting for that Carbon Trophy. Here he is coming through outer zone one, getting all the way out oh, with that nice flick angle. right there, coming in outer zone nice two, flick right not there. bad at all, coming into that inside clip, rolling around outer zone three right there with a strong finish and a strong flex right there by you know what? the this, champ. I like this Yamashita better than the first run Yamashita. This oh, is a yeah. lot more. This is a lot more exciting to watch because. Look at the way he kicked out on um, outer zone the one. angle outside zone one. Yeah, that was a for here. I like the way he did that. Just poked it yeah, right in. Right there, it's just like one, one, one flick right over there. And then all of outer zone three to the finish. Beautiful job. But like I said, right now he's sitting at 421 points. He was a champ last year, and he took first place here in 2019. He podiumed first. So definitely a track that he wants to take uh, take champion of and take that carbon trophy home. So we'll see here the anticipation by his team right there. Ninety-four. So it looks like he locked in the third place position, it looks like. Yeah. Because Kantayana Guida got a 95. And obviously, we already know who got the top score, which is Kazumi Takahashi rolling in with a 99. Probably our best score in qualifying all year. I think I all think FD Japan. Yeah. Yeah, I think 99. That's actually the highest score that we've ever got, 99. Exactly. So I'm smelling 100 coming up soon. So next year... Exactly. For the qualifier, we're going to probably see. But look at the view. I must say, clear skies, amazing today, clear skies. Yes, it was a little cold, but I'll take the cold over the rain any day of the week because the smoke show we were getting by all these drivers, the skills that they were showing out here, I mean, it tells that with the dry weather and throughout all these rounds, we're in the last round of the series, it shows with the scores right there. Our lowest is in the mid-80s probably. That's what we're guessing. Yeah. So that just shows right there. We Our mid-70s our mid were our lowest scores back early in the year. So it's, it shows the improvement by the drivers, but then also I must give it to the track. I must give it to the weather, everything else. And you yeah. can see Robbie sitting on his hands because he's cold. Earlier I was like, uh, it was so oh, cold. There you go. There you go. There's Yoichi Yamashita. <laughs> Yoichi Yoichi, 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 Yoichi Mamura. Tom Saiba. And there's Gary McQueen. And Tom Saiba over here. <laughs> So, yeah, um, for those of you who couldn't make it out here, thank you very much for watching the live stream. And also, um, if you are in the area, we do have um, – uh, it's going to be open for 
spectators tomorrow as well. So if you're in the area, you want to come and watch some live drifting, come on over and check it out. And also for those of you who joined us today and this whole year uh, watching the live stream, thank you very much. We're not done yet with this season. We have one more day, which is going to be the top 32 tandem going all the way to the champion. We already know who the champion is, but stick around and let's see who's going to be second place. You know, yeah, is it going to be Hibino? Is it going to be Takahashi? Is it going to be Minoa? Yeah, this is definitely going to be the battle of the carbon trophy and, you know, a little bit of cash to take home too. So if you're in the area, come check us out. We got vendors up there up top. We got good food here, good place to keep you warm. So come check us out. Give us a what's up. We appreciate you guys on the live chat. We love you all out there, and uh, we hope to see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to wear gloves tomorrow. <laughs> but, yeah, it's very chilly and windy, but like you said, I cannot ask for any more because of the, the great weather we're having right now, and it's definitely uh, good uh, for our last round of Formula Drift Japan. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be seeing some exciting tandem uh, tomorrow. And thank you to everybody. everybody. Stay warm and eat ramen. Thank you very much. Uh, miss you guys in the U.S. and also everywhere else. Thank you for um, chiming in. Hope to see you guys soon. And also you guys watching us from all over the world. Thank you very, very much. Cheers. Thank you. No, not rigged. We're check yeah, we're checking <laughs> if out If it is, I tell now. you. Yeah. See you guys and thank you. Um, hope you guys have a good night or good morning or from wherever you're at. This is Robin Yoshida and Kenny Harris. Thank you and see you guys tomorrow. Bye. ベリアスイコータ道でもちゃんと曲がる、ちゃんと止まる、高い安全性能を発揮。アイスカートセブンにしよう。セブン、セブン、セブン。やる。横浜。やる。革新のカーボンベゼル。